the end of time. Thirteen. O'clock. Well, hey, everybody. Yeah, it's not Wednesday. It's Thursday. And yeah. yet, here we are. Yep. <laughs> Jen had to do the Disney thing. Yeah. So. I did Epcot yesterday. Yeah. Epcot and lots and lots of drinking. Well, not, not that much drinking. <laughs> but some drinking, not gonna lie. We actually got worn out before, uh, far before Epcot closed. But we got caught in a rainstorm, so, you know. We'll talk about that on the sidetrack show, I guess, more. Mm-hmm. Unless people are interested but yeah because we're so we're gonna do the sidetrack show tomorrow night so you get two nights in a row all right it's a special week <laughs> but yeah so um i can't remember maybe it was zach was zach uh the one that um that recommended this topic and i thought that we'd already done this we kind of did we did a video a long time ago that was about like creepy youtube videos like the history behind them like i think we talked about like i feel fantastic and sad satan and kind of like all the classics of the genre but i realized that we hadn't done one that was specifically just like internet mysteries and shit like that so i don't we got on the topic because we were talking about 90s internet yeah 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 which was classic internet it's back when the internet was the wild west you know it was a new phenomenon you could have been watching it on Web TV or Prodigy. Remember that fucking shit that they had? Yeah. And then uh, you never could tell what it was you were going to see. They had some wild ass websites like goregallery.com. And you weren't quite sure if what you were seeing was true or not. It was just another time. And a lot of these stories come from that era. Some of them do. Yeah, it took me a while to kind of winnow out, like, which ones I want to do. Because I said, I don't want to go hog wild and, like, talk about fucking five things and we'll be here all night. But it's, yeah. like, there were, um, I think I got it down to three. I was going to do four, but it's because it's kind of like, I don't know, the fourth one I was like, eh, a lot of people have covered that one. I don't really do it. So I kind of wanted to cover ones that were kind of famous, but also, I don't know, just ones that were particularly interesting to me. And these are kind of the ones that most commonly come up, and these were the ones that I thought were the most interesting. So that's the ones we're going to talk about. Well, do you want to tell them what it, what they are? Um, it's in the sh- it's in the description. Okay. But we wanted to talk about uh, most mysterious song on the internet. Yeah. Because um, because you know a lot about that. You saw yeah. that on uh, on yeah. Wang's show. I've been following it for years, trying to figure out what that is. It's still well. And we spoiler got the, alert: no we, one has figured it out. We got the recording, so we can play it. For Hopefully, you guys. it works. Hopefully, it works. <laughs> Will we be able to hear it when we play it too? When they hear yes. it, yes. Okay, yeah. Right. Yes. And uh, there shouldn't be any copyright strikes because there's no copyright on it. Nobody knows who the fuck it is. I mean, shouldn't yeah. It's just an old dark wave song. I think from probably the eight nineties. No, eighties. Eighties. Okay. Yeah, they know for sure it was all. Well, it sure. was before eighty four, like before between eighty two and eighty four. So it must have been between eighty and eighty eighty four. Eighty two and eighty four. Eighty two and eighty four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They figure that out okay. that much. But they don't know who it is. No. Yeah. Nobody knows. And they don't know where it's from. But it's it's a good song. I like it actually. And there doesn't seem to be any other songs from this band recorded. They've looked, and they don't know what country it's from. It's just a, a, a spooky song. Kind of, I remember it. Kind of, I've heard it in a long time. I remember it kind of sounding a little bit like, kind of like Joy Division, and uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's sort of say. Yeah, I mean, nobody. Very I, early Cure, maybe, and eh, Joy Division, kind of. Kind of, it kind of struck me as more like a lot of the kind of goth adjacent stuff that was going on in the early 80s because i mean joy division yeah a lot of bands ripped them off later on but joy division sound was very very singular and nobody really like a lot of people kind of tried to sound like them but nobody sounded exactly like that i don't think that you could i don't think you could mistake them for another band whoever it is they're dead or something, or they yeah. don't want anybody to know. No, <laughs> I don't know dead. what the deal is. It was 82, that far back, they're probably dead. Because it would have leaked. 
Somebody said, hey, man, they're playing your old song. They don't know who that is. It would have gotten back to them. I think they're dead. I was watching, I think Simon Whistler did a video on this. I think it was that one that I was watching. And he was like, you know how this is going to be solved if it's ever solved? It's like there's going to be like some like 60-year-old dad like driving around and like he'll hear something over the car radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or his kid will play it or something like that. He's like, hey, that's my band. Yeah. It's like that's how it's going to be Yeah, solved. there's probably a few, <laughs> a few members still alive. You would think. But they're probably in their 60s or 70s and don't know what the fuck, you know. Don't even know. What yeah, the they'd is. have to be older than yeah. us by now. Yeah, like if they were, and and the thing about it too is that nobody knows. I mean, I'm assuming it was a full band, but nobody knows. It could have just been one person. Yeah, recording you know? on different tracks. You know what I mean? Right. Because it definitely does seem to have, you know, two guitars, a bass, a keyboard. And drums. Yeah, but in the '80s, you could have recorded that all separately on different. Well, tracks. yeah, I mean, well, yeah, and you can yeah. still do that nowadays. It may have been just been one dude. Yeah, so this, so that's a possibility. Yeah, also. and we the dude died know. or something. Because or it really does that. seem very strange, and I think that's why people are so fascinated by this particular case. Yeah, is because in this day and age, when like you hear a song and like immediately you can figure out who it is, and it's like this one has just. Um, defied identification yeah. since uh 2007 was when i think it kind of went uh public yeah so people have been trying to figure out what, what the fuck this song is since whatever, 2007 whatever it is it was some kind of demo song well yeah that's probably what they're because thinking, there yeah. doesn't seem to be any other songs and they would have surfaced people would have said oh that sounds like this other band yeah. But there seems to be just this song. I've heard some people say that they thought it sounded like Dino Lakayan, but I was like, I don't know. I have a couple of their CDs and it doesn't sound like them to me. And I didn't even think they were around back then, but maybe they were. Because, I mean, I thought most of their shit I thought was like from the 90s and the 2000s. But it doesn't sound like. It sounds more like somebody. You know, like those. Well, you know. I don't know how, how much they know. But, um, you know, like all those, like, kind of goth rock. Yeah. compilations that used to get like back in the like from Cleopatra and all that it sounds like a band that would have been on one of those like one yeah. of the old ones and then like yeah. never did anything ever yeah. again it sounds like it was recorded like on a on a on a six or eight track recorder that's what it sounded like to me it was something small like it kind of reminds it kind of reminds me of somebody like Dance Society or something like yeah. that you know like that song that, yeah, I, that like I have on my Society. phone that I play yeah. for you all the time like that but more more crude we'll get into it hold on let me get some ice <laughs> He's no. gotta go get ice. I gotta get ice. I'm running out. Yeah. Um, Zach says, speaking of age, I gave myself an existential crisis the other day when I realized I'll be 30 in four years, and there are 16 year olds now born the year the original iPhone came out. Yeah, it's pretty weird to like think about that, and it's pretty weird to think too because every now and then, like, I don't usually think about it all that hard, but it's sometimes like we have friends that are like young enough to be our kids, but you don't really like think about it that way. I don't know, I guess. It's not weird, I promise. But yeah, it's just like every now and then I'm like, oh yeah, I did this, that, and the other thing. Because I was trying to think um, when I was at Epcot yesterday, and I was like, man, when was the last time I was at Epcot? And I was like, God, that must have been like fucking 30 years ago. I think it was 30 years ago, at least. Because we were trying to figure out like some of the rides that were there. I was like, whoa, well, I don't remember this being here like when I was here last time. But the first time I went to Epcot was in the year it opened in 1985 because we went there on a school field trip and I was in fifth grade and I still remember that. Some of the stuff is still there but they've obviously added a lot of stuff. Change the glass, man. That last glass for some reason, every time I put my face in there it smelled like that cat food. The pate. <laughs> it I don't like know pate. why it would smell like pate and I don't think a cat got in there. You never know. Never you never know tell. what they get up to when we're not around, when we're sleeping and stuff. Yeah, they could be sticking their faces in sticking everywhere, their faces breathing in there, and fucking stuff. breathing and shit. It's just like, like fucking cat pate. <laughs> yeah, that stuff that that stuff. It doesn't that, now that Bambi. Yeah, eats. Um. Yeah. Ben says I've never heard of this mystery song and have no idea. You're gonna yeah. wait. We got it. It's yeah, good. I hope I like I said I I did it real quick like before yeah. the show, but hopefully hopefully it works. Hopefully it works. Um, before we get too much into it though, 
because we're going to do three cases. We're going to do Mysterious Song on the Internet. We're going to talk about this dude that uh, allegedly sent emails to his friends and family after he was dead, um, which is kind of a weird case. And we're going to talk about the that Plague Doctor video. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the I think coded I know what one. About. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to do Cicada 33012, but I was like, ah, eh, everybody's covered that one. And that one's kind of. It's cool, but it's like they've, you know, I, I don't think it's anything all that nefarious. But so. And I will say the Plague Doctor one, they think that maybe has been solved, I guess, like in a particular way, if you believe them. I don't know. But we'll kind of get into that in a little bit. Yeah. Um, October 8th said, oh my goodness, I'll be 60. October 6th. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're getting there. I just turned 51 on Tuesday, yeah. so. I went back in the archives and was watching the shows from fucking four years ago and seeing how much we changed. I changed a lot. Mm -hmm. I was skinny. And then I got skinny fat. And then I fucking bulked up. And uh, Jenny looked and sounded like a child back then. It was fucking funny. <laughs> but, uh, man, we're both in training. And Jenny's fucking... She's making a huge comeback. Her body's getting fucking fine. Her <laughs> legs are like fucking strong as shit, man. You guys are going to see. Yeah. We're strengthening ourselves for our 60s. You know, so when we get old, fucking we'll be in good it's shape. It's like a bulwark against yeah, like yeah, old Yeah, it's a age. bulwark against fighting against fucking age. <laughs> Uh, hey, Tammy showed up. Yeah, I didn't know you were going to be here, Tammy, because I knew Eddie is was tonight. He said, just sitting, waiting on Eddie. Okay, well, yeah, don't... Don't, like, watch the show while you watch it. You watch that shit, and then you got to tell me about it later on. I'm about... He said he's going to be six. I'm only five years away from that, basically. Maybe October six. October 8th is a she. Maybe six years. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're 54. Four. 50. yeah, I, think, I think I'm 54, yeah. Uh, yeah, 54. July 1st, 1969. I think I'm 54. Yeah, you turned 54 this yeah. year. Um, ben says... I feel young? young still, though. Well, yeah, I feel like a lot of older people say that, yeah. too. Yeah. Like, it's like, yeah, I still feel like I'm, like, fucking 30. Yeah. Yeah, it just, it just it seems like fucking 35 was just yesterday. It goes fast. The weird thing about it is I always kind of felt like it seems like when I think about it, I'm like, holy shit, like some shit happened that I thought sound, felt like yesterday and it was like 30 years ago, like I said. Yeah. But then sometimes, I don't know, it's it's like fast and slow at the same time. Or yeah. it's like seems like a long time ago, but it doesn't seem like a long time ago. Yeah. It's it's a very weird. I situation. felt like I felt like shit though a couple of years back when my fucking hormones crashed before I went on gear though. Remember how fucking I was getting? Yeah. Scared of everything. I felt like I was dying. Mm -hmm. It was fucking weird. If you, you guys, when you guys get older, in your late forties, early fifties, fucking you hit that adrenopause. You won't know what it is. It's just all of a sudden your instant loss of fucking confidence and life force, and you feel like you're dying. That's what it is. It's that. Go on test. We got some listeners here that took my advice. It fucking helps out a lot. You feel a lot better. Zach said, I hope y'all do the Final Fantasy House cult someday because Tom's reaction to it will be hilarious. Yeah, I have, it, I have it on the list and like I put it in the poll a couple of times, but it never wins. But yeah, I kind of want to do it too. What is it? The Final Fantasy House. I don't know that one. Yeah, he's he you like Zach is like really good at like recommending stuff. Cause, yeah, he like, knows I'll react to it a certain way. <laughs> Yeah, Zach's got that empathy. Yeah, though. he's got that bathhouse empathy. <laughs> Bath okay. Yeah, he knows what a that sounds like. That sounds out. like a, a novel that That's I would want to read. Yeah, you could write it. You could write it, we oh. could and then we could shoot it. It'd be an erotic movie, like back in the seventies. Oh my god, that would be funny. Yeah. <laughs> Zach would be. Zach would was kind of have a starring role in it. Okay. Yeah, like a supporting yeah, we, role. We can yeah. Do this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tequila says. Oh yeah. Yeah. Tequila says, uh, so glad you're on tonight while I'm packing for my move. Had to rely on your back catalog to get through Wednesday night. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, like I said, I didn't get home last night until like 1130. I can't believe, man, I'm going through the old catalog, man, and fucking remember the shit we were talking about a long time ago. It, sounds, it was like it was fucking yesterday. I can't believe this show's kind of become a cult fucking classic. Yeah. You, we got people listen to our back catalog. We're like the, got vel young people we're like the Velvet Underground of YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like hard we, we only have fourteen thousand subscribers, which is a lot, I mean, but you know. Um but it's not like hundreds of thousands like mm. some of the other channels that mm. I watch. So it's just kinda like but you know, all the cool people like hang out here and so we're just like, you know what I mean. <laughs> you know. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, let's see. Um, <laughs> Man, every time I look down, I'm getting further and further off the fucking screen. Well, what are you doing? I don't know. You moving? All right. I'm not. You're not moving? Dude, I'm not moving. Okay. It must be you. Okay. You're just right. kind of, right. I don't know right. what right. the fuck you're doing right, right there. <laughs> yeah, he says, only I'd be crazy enough to move to, MN is, is that Minnesota or Montana? Is that Minnesota? Mm-hmm. I can't remember. All those M states. We need to like. MS? Have... That's Mississippi. No, I said MN. Oh, MN. I said, is that is that Minnesota. Montana? That's Minnesota. I, I think. think. Yeah, because Montana, I think, is M-O, yeah. right? No, that's Missouri. No, that's Missouri. MT? Shit. Probably something like MT. Now I can't remember. <laughs> that's, why are you drinking my drink? Oh, sorry. <laughs> you got all kind of problems. What are you doing? I just saw a drink and grabbed it. Well, you got the big jar. Mm-hmm. I can't drink with the big jar because then I have to like sit there with both hands. Like Your that. hands are too small. Because my hands are too little. I'm yeah. sitting there going, <laughs> like I'm drinking out of fucking, I'm drinking vodka out of a fucking cereal bowl. <laughs> Zach says, I thought that was multiple sclerosis, MF. Uh, yeah, Ben says, don't move to Minnesota. I mean, you know, yeah, it is Minnesota. Okay, so I was right the first time. I was right the first time. Uh, Tequila says, also, uh, congrats on your marriage. It oh, was my you. birthday too. Yeah, thank you very much. It was my birthday too. Yeah. Yeah, my birthday was uh, Tuesday. You know what I mean? We've been married for fucking ever, man. It's just, we just had to make the shit. We just had to do the paperwork. Yeah, that's right. All. Yeah. I mean, we probably I should. Mean, I called her my wife off and on for fucking years. <laughs> if some dude tried to go sideways with her, I go, get away from my fucking wife. <laughs> she became my wife when other motherfuckers were chasing her. <laughs> so I had to kind of make the shit serious. Yeah, he had I was to... whipping people's asses over. Well, you know. You know. It happens. It yeah. happens. But yeah, so. We just we probably should have done it a long time ago. We maybe would would we would have got some fucking bonus shit probably. Right, yeah. but you know, better late than never. I guess. We're gonna see what the VA sends me. Yeah, maybe maybe it'll be like really cool. I think we'll get a raise. That's probably a couple hundred dollars extra. Well, month, I mean probably. that's better than nothing, we'll right? See. I mean, and then I'll start. We'll start doing the paperwork for fucking get you some uh, health insurance or something. That'd be nice. We'll see. What to we have some do. health insurance for a change. Yeah. I think I can also get. Um, money for school like if i wanted to go back to school which i don't necessarily Probably. but if i did it would be nice yeah. to have that option you know what i mean you got that 80 percent va yeah medical retirement ben says it's good that you're no longer living in sin jesus is happy now yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. no we're still living in sin <laughs> we still do some unacceptable shit I mean, we're in the sex industry <laughs> just with each other though so far yeah yeah Yep. So, but yeah. that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. It's all fun and games. We, we like it like that. Yeah. We like we, it like We that. got people trying to fucking get recruited. Yeah. <laughs> I got a feeling Aaliyah is fucking looking for a job. Maybe so. We'll see. Well, like I said, I can't afford to pay nobody yet. Yeah. So. We'll see. <laughs> and I wouldn't make Should nobody. Should I pay just to see that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't make nobody do nothing for free. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. So I can't, like, really afford to pay them, but... Le- Aaliyah says she might jump in for the live show. If you're here, Aaliyah, go ahead and drop something into them. She's like, hey, don't... Get my name yeah. out your mouth, she's saying. Yeah, get my name out your mouth. <laughs> she probably has a fucking fake... <laughs> Aaliyah's our, one of our daughters. It was a daughter. With little goth daughters. Well, yeah. like, yeah, like I was saying before, it's just like when you hang out with people and then you find out that they're, like, half your age or less right. than half your age. Right. But like I said, it's not weird. It's like, because you don't really think about it. No, I don't, I don't they're really just think people. about. Yeah, there's people. I don't really think about right, how old yeah. people are. Um, John Robertson said, "Finally made a live show again. Congratulations on the marriage, guys. That's awesome. Thank, Thank you, you for the super much. chat, man. Like, Thank you, Jeffy Art, for the super chat. Happy birthday, Jenny. Toasting with five dollars, five dollar wine, and ten dollar French fries. See, I was always nice. telling, I was always telling <laughs> Jen we had to do surprise shows on fucking off days because we have people that." We'll never be able to make Yeah, ourselves. that was another thing we were thinking about doing, that right. sometimes we might not even announce it. We might just, like, jump on and do, like, do a, a sidetrack show, show like yeah. a, but, like, at a weird hour. Mm-hmm. So we might end up doing that at some point, mm-hmm. if we have time. Because I was like, that actually is a good idea. Because I know that a lot of people are always like, oh, they, you know, they live in a different time zone, or they work certain hours or something like that, and they can't always catch a live one. And I was like, so maybe we should just kind of, like, jump around whenever we have time and just, just come Just jump on. in and do a sidetrack while we're fucking half snock or... <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, like a fun. four o'clock we'll in the morning. Like, hey, we're drunk as shit. Yeah, four o'clock in the morning on a fucking Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Just to see who watches. That's, that's how we roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's uh, yeah, that actually probably would be really fun, but mm-hmm. but we'll, we'll see, we'll see. I'm not promising anything, but I do think it's a good idea. I wanted to say too, um, again, thank you very much, Jeffy Art, for the super chat. Um, 
that, we had a new old patron over on our Patreon. Uh, so thank you once again, Master of Dungeons. I think you were uh, on Patreon before and then gone, but then returned. Yeah. So thank you very much for that. Also, got a little super thanks. Um, we did from we yeah from a user named RP seven R five four I think is I was just like okay thank you so very I much had, for so I had to write thanks. that down yeah so yeah we have that set up like if you ever if if you're not like here for this for the yeah. um, live stream like obviously you can push a little super thanks yeah button super thanks cool. is rare we we rarely get one so if you give us a super thanks we will definitely give you a shout out we really appreciate them um, the show basically demonetized anything we make off of it is a cross between patron and the few super chats we get now we understand that fucking times are tough right now you know fucking the economy is not going that good so we're going to continue to do the show whether all y'all pay us or not because we like doing the show <laughs> it is but fun. fucking paying paying us for it giving us a tip here and there really fucking helps us out um but yeah, that's all. That's all I'm gonna say about it. It helps yeah, us yeah. out. Thank you. <laughs> Zach says, "When you guys used to upload in the mornings, I'd watch you while eating breakfast." Yeah, yeah. see, so yeah. we'll just kind of because yeah, for a long time we uploaded the shows, mm -hmm. and I usually put them up at certain times. In the Live morning. is so much more fun, though. It is a lot more fun, and a it's a lot more. easier for me because I don't really have to like yeah. edit them, and that's kind of a big getting nightmare. instant feedback from the fans is uh, in in you know on the, in the live streams is helps us a lot. It yeah, actually makes the shows a lot better. Yeah, I think they're a lot funner. Because, yeah. yeah, we go off on a lot of fucking tangents and some people piss and moan. It's just kind of like, yeah. get back to the topic and blah, blah, yeah. Not so much anymore because I think all those people have fucked off now. But, um, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anybody that, like, would have watched it was just kind of like, yeah, oh, fuck yeah. It. You're not going to change us or control us. We're fucking fixed. We're, we're we set do what we want. Way. We do what we want. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the cats, we do what it's we want. It's an entertainment show. We're not here to educate you. Okay, people with the information, this, 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 they got Wikipedia, man. Fucking. Well, that's what I mean. It's like you can get the information from other places if that's yeah. all you want. Yeah. We're just kind of here to use that as a jumping off point yeah. for us to like talk about that and talk about other shit. That's yeah, we got people doing their commute that want to hear us. Got people trying to go to sleep that fucking listen to us to go to sleep. Fucking, you got long haul truckers fucking hauling fucking loads listening to us while they're driving you know what i mean yeah so it, it, this is a this is a show to kill time basically and to socialize and to fucking show you guys some fucking trippy shit serial killers weird shit like the mysteries of the internet we're gonna talk about that or just fucking talking before we go out and, and begin the weekend or maybe we're gonna stay home for the weekend it's just you know it's just it, yeah, it's a general show we haven't decided yet yeah Cause I didn't honestly. I was I was doing Disney and Epcot for two days, um, and I spent some money, but not much because my siblings rule, uh, and they covered a lot of my shit. Well, because my one of my brothers works for Disney, so yeah. he can get a bunch of people in for free. So he got me in Epcot for free, and my sister got me in Disney for free. Now let me see. Let me let me help him out a little bit. Over the years, if you've got any Disney agents listening to us, over the years I fucking spilled a lot of information about. Shit that Disney employees told me about Disney. It wasn't her brother. He she hasn't he hasn't been working there that long. No, he's it been was, there a while. Yeah, but he. I was talking about the shit that was going on fucking ten years ago, fifteen yeah, yeah, years yeah. ago. That was that was actually people that don't work there anymore. They were they were some. I dated some. The one girl was face, and then knew a bunch of people that were fur. If you, if you Disney people know what I'm talking about, and then some mechanics that worked there. They were in. They're in the goth scene, working for Disney. And you just, I just heard about how that place was fucking run and just didn't like it. Rubbed me the wrong way. Well, now, I, we were talking about this at dinner yesterday, and my brother actually really, really likes it there. And he's like, and you get a lot of... He's like, well, the rules are kind of strict, but not that bad. And he's like, um, and you get a lot of perks. I mean, he just got a raise. He not only gets in all the parks here for free, he's like, I also get in Tokyo Disney for free. I get in... Fran the Disney in France for free. Uh, the other one that wherever the fuck it is, um, you know. He, so he gets in all the parks like around the world for free. What so, I didn't like so about I thought that was cool. What I don't like about Disney is that they can take a Disney princess and use that actress 
<laughs> in a like a real Disney princess, not a fucking cartoon Disney princess. You could take a girl that works at Disney as as the princess. They could take her and use her in a commercials, and not even pay her a bonus. She's See, but you it. have to sign off contract that says that. Though. Yeah, I would have never do that if I was if I was yeah. Disney. I would never make somebody sign that. I would say like, if we use your image in a fucking. A lot of companies do that, though. I hate to tell you, they're fucking. They they will tell you it's like if you are some kind of public facing blah blah, you have to sign a release yep. that says we have a right to your image and yada that yada. That is fucking stupid. It as is shit. stupid, but a lot of companies do. If that. I was an actor working for Disney, and they selected me to be in one of their commercials, I would at least want a little bonus. Yeah, you think? You know, I don't for, know. For like the... I said, I don't know how they run it now because you know you knew some people like a long yeah. time ago that worked there, but. So, and I don't know, because my brother doesn't do... He's not, like, a character. If they're going to make a fucking commercial and use your image and fucking you dance and dressed up as fucking Prince Charming or some shit like that, and it's and it's going to be a commercial, why can't you throw that person an extra grand for that day of work? It doesn't make any fucking sense. Any other decent company would do that. I just... Ugh. You know, I just, I just think they're fucking shysters. We have chiseled every bit of fucking money and work out of their employees. DB Dragon says, Tom, I have an idea for a podcast. Mm-hmm. Just you speculating on what stack actors or internet celebs are on or what yeah. they should go on. I would love to well, do that. Well, you would probably do that. You yeah. should probably do that. He must have asked because... about, he, wasn't he the guy? He was asked about Bane. It's the same same guy. Who is it asked I, about? I don't know. DB Dragon. Dragon asked that? Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I don't remember who asked about that. You can probably check. I said that. The, I said that Tom Hardy was probably on test and, and Deanna Ball. Go ahead and check the internet and see if that's what it was. Because I'm sure that's leaked. I think it was probably injectable Deanna Ball looking at him. He looked a little puffy. Which is okay, Stack. I probably would have done Nandrolone, but okay. But yeah, so um, should we get to the actual topic Go ahead. before it gets too late? Yeah. Now, before we start talking about the song... Should we play the song? Tom? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> pay well, no, atten- let's talk pay about attention. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even know what the, to- what, what the topic was. Yeah. We're, we're going to start talking about the song already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's That's talk about the, the first thing that we're going to be talking about. Like yeah. I said, we're talking about three cases and the mysterious song is the first one. Okay. The most mysterious song on the internet is what they call it. That's what it's under on Wikipedia. Yeah. Um, although, I think, although it's also known as like the wind because that's kind of what the lyrics sound like Mm -hmm. blind the wind which could also kind of be what the lyrics are i've also seen it called check it in check it out because that was something that i think that was in the um the what do you call the the shit on the file like the Uh, metadata yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. metadata that was the word i was trying to think of or take it in take it out so some people have called it that as well but usually if you do most mysterious song on the internet this is the song that will come up because it's here's the weird thing about this song we're going to give you a recording of this song this came up with somebody's tape tape cassette yeah we'll get into how they taped a german i think it was a german radio program wasn't it yeah yeah that had like dark wave bands yeah or like just like 80s music 80s dark wave type music the guy recorded this sh- the, the radio show. It was a weekly show, and that became his favorite song, but he never could figure out who it was, and he traded it throughout the internet, and other people liked it too, but they never could figure out who this was. They still don't know. They still don't know. Which is so weird. Yeah. So we're going to try to play the song for you now. Let me see. And we'll see if it works. If it works. I mean, we should still be here. Yeah. Okay, but here it is, hopefully. Uh, or not, maybe. Damn. 
slightly. But it's uh, yeah, it's obviously not really no. Yeah, and this is I would know that voice. Anyway. And this is before the dam started sounding like that. No, well, what's it? The dam started sounding like this more like in 87. Well, no, because Fan no, Phantasmagoria came out in 85. Yeah, Zach said it almost sounds like David Bowie. There were a lot of bands in the 80s that sounded like this, like especially like in the, in the goths. Yeah. I would call this a goth band, a dark wave band. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it's like, it's tantalizingly familiar. Yeah. I think that's why it bothers so many people, especially people like us that are like, it's just like, it sounds like, it's like, I just can't quite place it. Like, it it's a good song. It is, I like it. And it's in English, but I'm pretty sure it's a good form. Yeah, they're pretty sure it is. Yeah, not, not for this. I don't think it's from this. But actually, but not in, the, not in that era. It's something kind of like German or Austrian, maybe Czech. Yeah, that's kind of because yeah. of the accent. Yeah. Although, for all we know, this might have been across the Iron Curtain. Yeah, it's possible. Because they were making, they they were listening to music. Yeah. You know, they were they were, they were digging. I mean, they were they, they were huge Rolling Stone fans. They were they were digging all kinds of Western stuff that could be Russian, which that oh might yeah, it's it's totally possible. Because like I said, we'll get into yeah. where because a lot of people have gotten really invested in this. Because you know, everybody on the internet, we all love a mystery, right? Yeah. And if you have some time on your hands and you're really into that kind of shit, like people have been looking into this for, since, like I said, about 2007. I think it picked up more. You know, in later years, but that was kind of when people first started looking for it. I like the song. I do too. I like to. I like you to put that on the car playlist. Yeah, I think somebody uploaded it to Spotify. Spotify, but yeah. they but they claimed that they but they claimed uh, that they had written it or done. And everybody's they, like, yeah, no. no, it's no. like you weren't even born then when this right. fucking song came out. <laughs> Piss off. But it's like at least somebody put it on Spotify. Yeah, it's. I think it's under like the wind. I'm not sure or like blind the, the wind. I've seen it called that too. But I'm sure I could probably find it. Good. But yeah. So here's how here's how this happened. So there's a guy named Darius. Now I, this is a pseudonym. I'm assuming because he doesn't really want to, um, you know, anybody know who he is or whatever. So sometime between 1982 and 1984, uh, Darius he was a teenager then, and he was from Germany, and. Like a lot of kids in the 80s did, because, you know, we didn't have Spotify or nothing like that. So you would listen to radio shows that had music on them, and you would have your cassette tapes, and you would tape the songs that you liked and, like, make mixes with them. So that's what he used to do. Now, one of those shows that he used to like to listen to was called Music for Young People, except in German, and I'm probably not even going to attempt to pronounce that. <laughs> Music for Young Leute? Yeah, it was probably like Something one like single that. word. Now the Germans are, Music and No, it's, uh, it's right here. It's <laughs> Music for Young Leute. Music, Music for, for Young People. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, which was on the... A public radio station in Germany called NDR One. Now, one of these tapes, um, which he had labeled as cassette four, had a bunch of songs, and most of these songs came out in 1984 or prior to 1984. That's why most people think this song was from 1984, because there were some songs by The Cure on there. There was like an XTC song. Um, but he had like all these songs on there. And if you look like on the internet, if you look up most Missouri song on the internet, there's also this little typed list that I'm presuming that he made of like other songs that were on that tape with this particular song. And those songs were, one of them was Master and Servant by yeah. Depeche Mode. That was 84 or 83 or 84. That song came out. Um, Sunglasses at Night, that okay. Corey Hart song. Yeah. Um, Twilight Zone by oh, Golden, yeah, yeah. Earring. Golden Earring. Yeah. I, although I thought that was 82. 
But um, another one of the songs on there was the Ghostbusters theme by Ray Parker Jr. And that was definitely 84 because I yeah. remember that movie came out in 84 because I saw it in the theater. Um, it also had songs by Heaven 17 on it, okay, Malcolm yeah. McLaren, yeah. Simple Minds, Captain Sensible, like some other stuff like that. But this song, he called it, I'm pretty sure he typed it on there. I think he said Blind the Wind. And then he just had little question marks by it. Yeah. Because one thing that he would do, and I think a lot of us did this too, is like when he would record the song, he specifically like didn't put any DJ information on there because he didn't want it messing up the song, right? You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like he would wait until they stopped yapping and then would start recording the song and then like turn it off for the So the DJ talking. probably said what it was. Well, they don't, yeah, they don't know. He doesn't, he didn't remember like if the DJ said, but he's like, I was in the habit of not recording them talking. And I would just try to like write it down. Yeah. What's funny? But is he didn't catch like whoever, whoever did this song. What's everything. funny is that they got the Ghostbusters theme song played along the side of this. They got fucking sunglasses at night, which was mainstream as fuck. It was like a very mainstream song. But yeah. when you listen to the song, you're like, well, shit. Something off the first Sisters of Mercy, first and last and always album should kind of sounds right like that. Yeah. Would, would have been right, gone along along with this. You know what I mean? Fucking. But they, but they didn't play it. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't wasn't known. Well, first know. and last and always didn't come out till eighty five. Oh, it was eighty five. Okay, all right. Sisters of Mercy had, had they had put out some EPs prior yeah, to that. Alice was out by then. Yeah, Alice had, had come out before yeah. that, like the Alice um, EP or that single. Yeah, and they had done like some covers and they did like the Body Electric and all yeah. that kind of like the real old school sound yeah. and shit. But yeah, Reptile first House. and last and always, yeah, it didn't come out. Yeah, Reptile House. Mm -hmm. First and last and always didn't come out till eighty five. But yeah. yeah, so I I thought I too thought that was very funny because. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, you had like Depeche Mode. Yeah. And then which was pretty mainstream. And then Captain Sensible. Yeah. But then like alongside like Corey Hart and yeah, like, Corey Golden Hart, Earring yeah, and Golden the Earring. Ghostbusters theme. Super mainstream. So it's just like an eighties. Yeah. And then to play this one song that was like super obscure. It's so obscure that like nobody knows what, yeah. what the fuck it is even nowadays. That's what it's I'm just thinking. Hilarious. Why would he throw in this obscure fucking thing here? Yeah. Unless it's maybe weird. he knew these dudes. Well, Might no, well, a local band. well, no, because we'll get into that. Okay, we'll get into, we'll that. Get into right. that. Okay. So Darius, the guy that taped this, uh, supposedly, he said, "Now I wasn't sure if I recorded the song because he's like, what I would do is like I would record songs and like sometimes I would mix them together like from different broadcasts like on the same tape. So he's like, so I can't be a hundred percent sure that this particular song was played with these other songs that was just on the same tape. You know what I mean? Because he would mix them up sometimes." Um, but so, so that's the thing. Um, and, and as I said, because a lot of the other songs that he, that were on the same cassettes around from that period were from 1984, like Ghostbusters, they're assuming that the song came out in 84 or a year or two prior to that. Also, he said that at the time he had like one of those, um, techniques, uh, tape recorders and those were manufactured in 1984. So they're pretty sure that that's when the song was from or slightly before that. Now, he had the tapes for like 20 years. He like kind of just hung on to them. In 2007, though, he has a sister uh, whose name is Lydia, like, or that's her pseudonym. I don't know if that's her real name or not. And she got kind of fascinated about this song because she liked it and she was like i'm gonna find out who that fucking song is because all these years like we didn't know who it was and they would like play it sometimes and it was like bugging them right so you know once the internet became a thing because this is 2007 by this point she starts searching the lyrics like on the internet and everything like that and they couldn't find anything so she finally decides well i'm gonna post this on some forum somewhere and see if somebody can help me out maybe somebody will recognize it or something like that so she goes under a couple of pseudonyms online. One of them was Anton Rydell, I think, um, or Blue with like a bunch of U's in it. She actually took like not the whole song, but it's like a minute of the song or something like that. And she uploaded it to um, a German site that was all about like 80s music and like 80s synth pop and stuff. So she uploaded it to that. And there was also a couple of other music sites she uploaded. And she's like, hey, does anybody know who this is? So this little piece of the song, because for a while the whole song wasn't floating around on the internet, just like this one minute portion of the song was, because she initially said, I had the whole song, but I didn't upload it because I was afraid of copyright, that, that I would get in trouble for copyright because I didn't know who it was. So it's like, so she thought she'd be safe if it was just like a portion of it or whatever. So she just uploaded that. If you got a copyright strike, that'd be a clue to who it is. They would know. Well, yeah. It never happened though. Yeah. This is a, okay, go ahead. 
Danny Rowling said, uh, they kind of sounded like the 80s band The Jet Black Berries. Oh, maybe. I don't, well, I don't know. I I haven't, I haven't heard much of their stuff, so I can't really say. But they, it's just, it bothers me because it's like they sound kind of familiar. A lot of stuff sounded like that. But this. a lot of stuff sounded like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? The um, vocals sound like Dave Vanian from The Damned. Slightly. Kind of. But yeah. that's clearly not Dave Vanian. No. Like, he sounds but a lot. But it's that same kind of vocal style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Liliana says, hello, first time catching one of your streams. Hey. See, so that's what happens when we accidentally do it. Well, we didn't accidentally do it for a night. <laughs> we just had to do tonight because I was out of town last night. Um, big fan of your Tomes of Terror reviews. Well, thank you very much. I really like doing those. I really need to finish. I'm in the middle of um, Slewfoot by Brahm, and I really have to finish reading that because I have to review it, but I haven't had a lot of time. I'm also reading the... Um, the uh, Rob Halford biography, autobiography, which is actually quite good. Um, the early AI music. <laughs> yeah, that's what Ben said. Ironically, if she got a copyright claim, it might give a lead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, as far as I know, nobody ever, because a lot of people have posted the full song now. I just got it off um, archive.org. Like, it's pretty easy to find on there. A bunch of people have uploaded it at YouTube and as the, well. And the copy that we have came off that tape. Mm -hmm. that's, that's ridiculous. But it's, it's actually must have been a pretty good quality tape recorder because the recording sounded pretty good. To the yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if somebody's cleaned it up over the years or yeah, whatever. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Zach said, could have just been, this is what I thought too, some up-and-coming band that wound up going nowhere and I have no idea what's happening mm -hmm. or they're dead, which sucks so bad. Yeah, that's what I think Yeah, that's kind of maybe. And, Lily this is, and I have a feeling this is their only song. It was some kind of demo they made. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Yeah, Liliana said, awesome, I just bought Slewfoot. Yeah, yeah, I bought it not too long ago. I just haven't got a chance to finish it yet. Uh, and I just finished Womb. I really liked that book. If you're into extreme horror, I really liked Womb. I also have a feeling that this band never toured or never played live. No, probably not. Because I think people would have heard it and, and go, oh, I know who those are. You I, would yeah, think at least one person guys. in the fucking world, like on yeah. the internet, would write. But I think that's why people are so intrigued by this, because everything else... There's somebody out there that remembers, remembers that shit. It, right. You know what I mean? Especially, I mean, 1984 wasn't that long ago. No. I still kind of remember it. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, it was a long time ago, but not so long ago that everybody that would remember it is dead. You know what I mean? The Soviet Union and the Soviet satellite states were still in, in, in place. This is, I think this is something, I think this is something kind of Soviet sphere. I, I, that's just my, it might I, be. Yeah. I, that's what I think it is. Liliana said, what's the name of the song? Nobody knows Nobody really exactly. Um, mo mostly, if you search the most mysterious song on the internet, it usually comes up. I've seen it called Like the Wind. I've seen it called Blind the Wind. Um, I've seen it called, what was the other title that I said? Was um, something like, and this was just, I don't even know why it would be called this, but it was just because um, it was supposedly in the meta metadata. Would check it in, check it out. I don't know why it would be called that necessarily. That might be the name of the band. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, cause I can't. I can't really like discern all the words. It is in yeah. English. Yeah. But I can't really discern all the lyrics. It sounds foreign. It does. Well, like I said, it's in English, but it sounds like slightly accented English. Yeah. So so yeah so this little minute long snippet of the song is kind of starts floating around on the internet, cause like I said, the sister of the guy that had recorded it originally, she put it up on a bunch of like forums of '80s music, like trying to identify it. So this guy named Nicholas uh, Zuniga, I guess is how you pronounce it, or Zuniga, who worked for uh, Dead Wax Records, which is like an independent label, and they were kind of, um, their big thing was post-punk and synth-pop and everything like that. So he heard it, and he was like, wow, that's actually a good song, and he wanted to also figure out who it was. So he kind of like started investigating, trying to figure out who it was. Again, nobody seemed to have any idea about anything. Now, um... It seems that this this portion of the song was uploaded to YouTube a little while later, probably about 2011, I think, was the earliest upload to YouTube, but it didn't really get that many views. Like, it didn't really take off, you know what I mean? However, several years later, I believe in spring of 2019, 
Um, this 16 year old kid from uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Yeah. He was super into, even up. though he was yeah. 16 years old, he's yeah. really into like Fields of the Nephilim and Sisters yeah. of Mercy and stuff like that. He happened to hear it on YouTube and he really dug it. So he decided he was going to try and like, you know, figure out who it was too. So he uploaded it to his YouTube channel. Um, and then it's just kind of like, he also posted it over on reddit like on a bunch of different reddit communities hoping that somebody would be able to figure it out and at that point i guess he had enough followers or because it went on reddit or something like that at that point it went viral and everybody started like talking about it and everybody started trying to figure out well not everybody obviously but like a lot of people started to figure out try to figure out who this was um and then i think it got um, another boost when uh wang who we've talked about before. It's a great channel. Um, yeah. yeah, like he decided to do a show about it after somebody recommended it to him. It's like, right. oh, you should do like an episode about this. And it's still up on YouTube. I watched it earlier. It's about 15 minutes long. Good episode. It is a good episode. Yeah, yeah. it's like really interesting. And um, so, so at that point, you know, because he has like a really large audience. So it kind of like, you know, just went up exponentially from there. Um, and then somebody said, well, we need kind of the whole song. So the sister actually found the original tape and digitized the whole song and then put the song up. Because at this point, she wasn't worried about copyright anymore. So at that point, the whole song became available. Like I said, you can download it from anywhere. I got it from archive.org, but a bunch of people have uploaded it to YouTube as well. So, um, so it's on Reddit. It's on Discord. Uh, a bunch of people started like trying to figure out who this was. Um, and they're trying to figure out, you know, you know how people do when they get like all, so they're trying to like figure out where exactly the accent came from. They're trying to figure out all the lyrics. They're using they're, forensics. Right. They're trying to, yeah, they're doing like <laughs> yeah, forensics yeah. on it. Yeah. Like trying to figure out, like speculating all this other kind of stuff. Um, so they're thinking, well, this band is maybe from Germany or maybe Austria or Poland, like somewhere like Eastern yeah. Europe type of yeah. thing. Just because like I said, it's in English, but the. Now, let me say something. In this time, there was also an East Germany. And uh, that was on the other side of the Berlin Wall. And they were had a crushing totalitarian communist regime. This might be from there. And it might be the work of one man. And somehow made it its way across the Berlin Wall. If so, there'd probably be no records. Well, that's another possibility yeah. that um, that I'm going to get into in a minute. Okay. Because, yeah, that was... That was it does sound German to me. Yeah, yeah um, it does slightly. But like I said, yeah. it could be Austrian. It could because when yeah. you sing, it's kind of hard to right. tell exactly. It's hard to pinpoint. Like the well, only yeah, the only accent that I can reliably tell is like if you have a real thick accent when you're singing is maybe like an Irish accent or maybe a French accent. I can usually tell. The like strange thing about it is the is the obscurity. Yeah. See, which tells me that this did not come from a music scene, which makes me think the communist sphere somewhere bad. East Germany, maybe. Yeah, because if it came from... Because usually if you're in a band or something yeah. like that, there's other... You know other musicians. Yeah, yeah. You play there's together. A whole scene and, shit. and there's like a whole scene in whatever yeah. town you're in. Right. And it's like, so you'd think at least if even if all of those members of the band weren't around anymore, like somebody else would be like, oh yeah, I remember those guys. You know what I mean? But the fact that nobody remembers them, yeah, was, that leads me to believe yeah, that yeah, it came from somewhere that was, was not... Bad. Right. And it, which tells me that... I don't think there was there was no album. I think it's just this song. There was no live shows, so it was some place where the music was being suppressed. It, somehow it got into Germany. Man, that sounds like a situation that's happening in East Germany in '84. Yeah, well, like I said, I'll kind of get in because that is a, like a possibility. That is a possibility. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what yeah. I'm thinking. I'm gonna go make another drink. Take, yeah. I I wouldn't mind like okay, that. Yeah, just I'll refresh because it's kind of getting. Tequila says, I downloaded that Devil of Nanking book you reviewed a while back, and it was great. Yeah, I loved that book. It was really, really good. Mo Hater, if you haven't um, read it. But yeah, Devil of Nanking, it's really, really good. It's fucked up, but it's it's really good. But yeah, so... Um, yeah, so they're figuring out... The, well, yeah, it's obviously German or Austrian or Polish or something, like, at least from the accented English... Um, as I mentioned earlier, is this a whole band? Is just this one guy like playing all these instruments? It seemed like they did go into a studio. Um, and I think that the, um, that the keyboard that they used was one that was quite expensive at the time. So they either would have had 
the money to get it, meaning they took the shit seriously, or they rented a studio where you could have access to that. Um, you know what I mean? Now, so what they decided to do, like through all the investigation, they said, well, maybe what we should do is try to figure out who the DJ was on this particular radio show um, that supposedly played this song. And maybe he would, you know, on the off chance that he might remember it like this many years later, right? Um, so the they figured out that the DJ probably, that was that probably played the song, was a guy named Paul Baskerville. Now he was British, but he lived in Germany at the time. I don't know if he still, but as of 2019, he still worked at that radio station as far as I know. Um, so they asked him about it. Like they actually did cause it's the internet. So they tracked his ass down <laughs> and they started asking him if he remembered it. Um, he did not. And he's like, I don't know if I even played it on my show. You know, it was a long time ago. It was 1984. I wouldn't remember a song that I played on the radio in 1984, but you know, I'm not this guy. So, but he said he didn't remember playing it. Um, and he said, I mean, and he has, a collection of like 10,000 albums. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, it could have been on any of those. Um, I have no idea, but I don't really, when they played it for him, he didn't really remember it. Now he did say that one thing he would do other than kind of like all the, like I said, sort of mainstreaming songs that he played on the show as we were, you know, saying the titles of them. He said, now sometimes what would happen is that I would get these random tapes from like indie bands and things like that. And as, as um, Tom mentioned, some of them had been mailed to him or smuggled to him from across the Berlin wall. So that's what I was saying earlier, why that is a possibility because the DJ did say that occasionally he would get tapes smuggled to him from bands on the other side yeah. of okay. the Berlin wall and that he would play them on the show. Now, he doesn't have, a, you know, you were in there, but he said he, the particular DJ, he's like, I don't have any memory of that song or I don't remember playing that. But he's like, that is a possibility because I did get tapes like that sometimes yeah. that were smuggled across or, like, or yeah. mailed to him or something it's like that. And he would play them. Um, he's like, yeah, he thought he didn't necessarily think it was German. Like I said, he's a British guy, but he lived in Germany and might still, as far as I know. But he's he thought that it was more likely he's like, it could be German just going from the accent in English. Um, but he said, but it could also be Polish or Russian. Um, so he's like, I'm not really sure. Um, and he's like, you know, we had the playlists from back then, but you know, they're long gone. They've long been thrown away. And he said there was another DJ working there who he remembered from that time period who might have played it. Uh, but that dude has since passed away. So we don't really know um, if, because B Paul Baskerville, like I said, I don't even know, because the last thing that I saw that w where they were talking to him was from 2019. And at that point he was still alive and he still worked at that radio station, but um, in Germany. But he said that there was another DJ working there in 84 who might have also played it, but that guy passed away. Like, so they don't really know what happened like i think he died in 2016 or something like that that's a big clue that's a big clue when he said that they would play stuff smuggled across the berlin wall yeah yeah, yeah. see that so that's what i thought was like the most likely yeah. scenario especially because absolutely nobody yeah recognized it you you'd, know what i mean if it was that you'd have a situation where the guys in east berlin could pick up rate western radio signals yeah so they could hear the music being played in germany they could learn english and fucking see the lyrical styles but they're kind of in a society that has a bunch of rats there was like a rat culture fucking east germany if you had any kind of western sympathies your neighbors would fucking report you they had their they had, when they when that shit fell they went into the archives of the um, east german secret police and they found out the damn half of the damn population of East Germany was a bunch of rats ratting on their fucking neighbors over stupid shit, you know. Oh, I, they, you know, they like this kind of music, or oh, this person once said something that made me think that they that they like the West, you know. They were rats, but um, so it, I, it could come from there. And it may have been one man with like a four track or a six track recorder. That's another thing. 
like I said, working I, alone. I have heard, and I think you were out of the room when I said this. I have heard that the particular style of keyboard that was, I can't remember what keyboard it was, but it was one that was quite expensive at the time. I think it was like twenty five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Um, what you know, which would have been a lot of money in nineteen eighty four. So, would have done it. well, well, that's another thing. So yeah. you don't really know, I, and I don't know if this is necessarily true or not. I don't know enough about music engineering to say, but they're like, well, because this particular um, keyboard was used, either this band was like serious and they actually could afford to buy that, or they could afford to rent studio space for a day or something like that, and that studio had one of those. There, now, a band like that would have had fans and would have would have maybe been records of. Maybe it was an Eastern German who worked at a university or some shit like that that had access to that. Mm. You know what I mean? Where they were doing, where they had music school. Because yeah, it could have been that too. East Germans did have fucking music, yeah, state yeah. sponsored music. And maybe this was something that he did like, in his own time. Like on the down low. On sure. the down low. Yeah. So it didn't necessarily mean this is a guy in his basement. It might have been a guy who. Was a university music professor or worked, you know? Some yeah, and shit had like access to had the access equipment, to it. right? And just kind of like snuck in there, after snuck in hours. there, and did, did a song and in did English. the shit. Right. Yeah, you don't know. It, it could be anything. It's that, a mysterious shit, man. And it's a great song. I really like that. Yeah, song, it's a good song. Actually, it's um, a couple of bands have covered it since then. Really? I guess you might. <laughs> yeah. Might as well. Might as well. <laughs> because you know they can't bust you for it. Right. It was from the heart. Whoever made it. Zach said, uh, I did learn the Bee Gees manager, because Zach got really into the Bee Gees, used to send in nameless tapes to DJs so they get radio play when they weren't super fashionable. So maybe that's hmm. also what happened. Yeah, maybe it was like some one-off of somebody that was like kind of famous and they wanted to do this one kind of song. When you have a song that's like this, chances are, I mean, th something like this would, could, would catch on in 84. Yeah. If there were other... If it was like off of an album, people would want to know the rest of the album, and it would have survived. So there's no album. The song is is, is a demo. It's a single. Yeah, I kind of th well, okay. Yeah. And here's another thing too, and this just happened in the last couple of years. So as I said, like, people on Reddit and shit like that are are investigating the origins of this song. So back in 2020, one user on Reddit, he found or he was able to attain. Uh, the complete list of songs that Paul Baskerville had played on Music for Young People in 1984. Um, or so he said. So and he said. published it on the site. Now, so everybody went through it, and all of the songs were matched. Which means that this song was maybe not played on that show, and was maybe played on another show. Which means that we have to go back to the back drawing to board. So, Again. so he may have take, gotten this off of another show. Off of another show. Well, because like I said, the guy, Darius, yeah. he did say that he was just recording stuff off different radios. That was the one that he first thought of because that was his favorite one. And that was the one that he recorded the most songs they off know, of. That kind of matches, though, because when you talked about the other songs that they played on that fucking, in that set. Right. They don't have anything to do with this this sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like other yeah. than maybe Depeche Mode. Maybe The Mode, Cure and the Depeche Mode. And maybe. Yeah. Well, and there was like Malcolm McLaren was on there, and yeah, but there's no telling what that sounded simple like. Simple Minds and it early was Simple Minds was kind of more. Yeah. They didn't. They they weren't as mainstreamy as they he got claims. Later. That's the real list. Yeah, supposedly. No, and and the evidence is solid. I mean, he's got a. Piece uh, of well, paper. I don't know. I'm not really sure. What, how, where did he say? How did he say the list came to him? A, a xeroxed piece of paper. Oh, the the guy on Reddit. Oh, yeah. I'm not really sure. You don't know. Okay. But yeah, so this was just like a couple of years back. But he yeah. said he was able to get the, and that song wasn't on there, which well, doesn't mean it doesn't exist, obviously. But it's just kind of like that he's saying, oh well, maybe it wasn't that radio show, and maybe we need to like yeah, look in another odd direction. I seem to remember that that German radio show wasn't really known for keeping records uh, real well because it was just kind of an on the spot ad hoc type of show. Anyway. I don't, you know what I mean? Well, radio stations in general, I think they are they you pretty much have to like have lists of playlists and shit yeah. like that. Bill, okay. because it it has to do with and I'm not sure how Germany works, but I know that in the US like radio because you have to pay a certain percentage like for every okay. iteration of that song that you play, so you have to keep track. I remember that they were saying that you can't just play whatever. Yeah, you know I remember what I mean? they were saying that there was a lot of gray though in, in the records from Yeah, maybe so. Like, I don't think you had to keep it for very long. 
the, the records. You know what I mean? It's not like he didn't need 40 years of fucking song records. Because uh, I remember Wang talking about that. Yeah. That they, that they, that they didn't have any records. That's what I remember him saying. Well, I'm according to the DJ that worked mm-hmm. there. I mean, they did have records, but they threw them out. They like, threw them they out. Could, so I'm yeah, saying they don't but, keep them. Right. They don't keep them because right. why would they? But right. it's like you were supposed to keep track of like For everything while, that yeah. you played because, like I said, it's it's a percentage. I don't yeah. like I said I don't know how it works in Europe, but it's a percentage that you pay. Yeah. That goes out. But to as the soon artist, as that shit's know. a couple years old, you don't need it anymore. They were throwing that shit out from what I remember. Yeah, because why would you keep it? Yeah. It's just to, like takes up RAM. Nobody cares that what you played five years ago. Right. I mean, except for except for everybody trying guys, to figure out what this right, song yeah. is. They weren't, plan, they weren't planning on this. Well, no, song. obviously. It's like... They didn't realize that people would want, want to know what who, what band this is. Which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Way, way, way back in yeah. 1984 when I was 12 years old, um, you know, somebody somewhere played a song on, the Ger- on German radio and somebody recorded it. It's like, hey, that's a pretty catchy tune or whatever. Yeah. And then... Decades later, people are like, "What the fuck is that? Why yeah. did you keep what any song of it? was that?" <laughs> <laughs> and it's just fucking crazy that it's like that happened like that. But you know what I mean? It's just kind of like nobody was thinking. I guarantee you, it's not a band, not a real band. It's yeah, a demo they probably song. don't. It's a demo song from a guy who made that, uh, and it, it may be one or two guys, but probably it could be one. Could be one. Dude yeah, it made just that. could be one dude. Sure. On the other side of the Berlin Wall. I mean, that's it, much easier to do yeah. nowadays, but you could still totally do it back yeah. then if you could play and all the instruments. Because nobody recognizes this shit, and it doesn't come from any kind of social spheres, because it didn't come from a social sphere, which means East Block, Eastern Block, communist. Probably so. Yeah, I like think it so. It was probably just like mailed over. Yeah, communist. Not, they mailed it, smuggled it. Ben Here, says. Made my song, you know. Um. Yeah, Ben said, "Doesn't don't the stations pay a set fee and it gets divided up between artists based on number of plays?" Yeah, I think that's kind of how it always worked. I can't remember the name of the system. I know it, but I can't think of it. Maybe somebody can remind me. That's but yeah, another, that's what that's what they do. They pay a set fee and then it just goes out to the artist. That's depending. another thing that makes you think East Block, because Eastern Block products weren't copyrighted. And they weren't, and you could, in the West, play them for free. You could copy them for free because they didn't even do patenting. Here's a good example. The CZ-75 pistol. It was a fucking beautiful pistol. It was copied over and over again in the West because they didn't fucking, it didn't have a patent on it. It was from the communist bloc, you know. Just, the communists made it. They didn't care if you made any profit off of it. They wouldn't sue you. So... Italian companies like Tanfuligo were started fucking making CC seventy five copies, which is a Czechoslovakian pistol. But they were in the East Bloc at that time. You could copy anything from the commies. Well, that's which the, would mean that you could pay any, any any song you got from them, you could play it, and you wouldn't have to worry about royalties. They weren't a fucking profit making civilization, and they didn't have the legal structure to sue you. Well, yeah, and it's always easier to like copy somebody else's shit than mm-hmm. come up with your own shit. So yeah. If, if you're not going to get in trouble for it, then most people will absolutely do that. Of course. So. You, that's why everybody copied the AK-47. It wasn't patented. Well, sure. You know, well, I might as well make it. You know, the commies weren't going to come after you. They didn't have a concept of money. Not as we know it. Yeah, or, Ben said, um, that's how it works here, which I'm assuming is Australia. If a business wants to play a radio in their waiting room, they're supposed to pay the fee. Yeah, they are. Um, that's why, like, back in the 80s and 90s, that's why Muzak was so popular, because that was, like, royalty-free or whatever. Yeah. But, yeah, if you play a radio in your, like, the doctor's waiting room or something like that, technically they are supposed to pay that fee um, that goes to the artist, because it's public. Um, yeah. It's public broadcast. Like, people are hearing it, so the artists are supposed to get a cut of that. Yeah, but in this case, if you had an East German artist that smuggled something across the border, he wouldn't even want any money. He just want you to pay the play his song because he wanted it to be heard in the West. Yeah. So yeah, and they, and, and the and the radio and a, and a West German radio station would play it happily. Yeah, and that's their brothers on on the other side of the wall. They were trying to reunite. Yeah, I mean this. Yeah, I think it's East German. Uh, I mean that to me seems like the most likely thing. Yeah. Right now. That seems like the most. That's what I think. Because if it was anything else, if it was any other, mm. you know, country back then, that it was, you know, if it was you a British band or a yeah. Pol- or something like that, like yeah. somebody would have remembered it. Yeah, and they would have made more material. 
So you go, CNN. oh, that's what you call it. I recognize that voice. Right. You know. Yeah, the you, fact that nobody right. recognizes any aspect of it is yeah. what's kind of freaky to yeah. me. Yeah, because it was a one-off. It's a sing- it's a single. But I mean, I kind of wit- I kind of hope that the person that made it is still alive because I- it would be kind of neat to be like, wow, now I'm kind of famous. <laughs> Probably dead. Probably dead. I know, sadly, but East East German uh, life expectancy was pretty low. Uh, most of them died from alcoholism. Very depressing situation. And even if the guy, uh, but then the reunification happened in what 1990, 91, somewhere around there. Shit, that was more than 10 years, almost four, 13 years later, the guy may have died. Yeah, it's possible. During that time, yeah. Half Naked You said, uh, when did Tom retire from the Army? Well, I didn't retire from the Army. I've, uh, my enlistment ran up in 94. But then uh, uh, I ended up kind of entering a fucking weird world after 9-11 of fucking contracting and stuff. And then uh, I suffered an injury... Well, this is a long story, and uh, ended up getting eighty percent disability through the VA. So I'm I'm retired, medically retired. Yeah. Right. Because the injury was such that you could right. not continue your military yeah, career. Yeah. Right. Uh, and they do shit in a weird way. It happened retroactively. I got the VA settlement over ten years after the injury happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you had they to try go. to pay you off. You had How to. My leave? They, uh, you had to jump through a lot of hoops. Yeah, yeah. Had to had jump through some hoops, but they try to pay you off. Well, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> lawyers and shit. Well, you know, everybody yeah. got to get their cut. Yeah, but yeah, it's 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 all a fucking, it's all a grift anyway. The entire military industrial complex is a fucking grift. Well, that's why I told you Everything before. Everything is a grift. It's just kind of like, hey, if they're going to give you money, yeah. get, get every single drop yeah. out of them that they'll give you. Why wouldn't you? I'm Everyone a, else does it. I am a political atheist. Republicans and Democrats, those are just fucking clowns. It is all a grift. All those motherfuckers are grifting. Uh, civilians need to wake up. It's a bad system. Very bad. I'm pretty sure everybody knows Yeah, that they, they know by now. They're right. Uh, Half Naked You then says... Uh, yeah, so is Ryan. He was just wondering, you should get extra money now that you're married. Yeah. Yeah, that's what... And Good we've luck. already gone online, like, on the VA thing, and he already claimed me as a dependent. So yeah. we're going to see how that works out. I think it's probably an extra 200 a month, I think. I'm not really sure. It's we'll probably see. done by percentage. I think it's yeah. done by percentage of, like... I was looking it up, and I was like, well, this is, like, too... You're looking it up. She's no, 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 no. I All was... Right. Well, I was kind of... I saw, like, a site because I was yeah. looking for how you would do it. Yeah. And it's some, like, complicated formula, like, what percentage your disability is or what right. percentage your pension is or whatever. Right. And it's just kind of like this whole... And I couldn't figure it well, out. Well, I'm at so. 80%. So right. it would be pretty good. A couple hundred bucks, probably. Yeah. Ben says, back in the day, DJs and stations would actually get paid bribes to play music on the radio. Yeah, there's a word for it. It's yeah. called payola. Payola, yeah. Um... Yeah, uh, music shops got paid bribes to put albums prominently, then agents would buy them up to get music awards. Yeah, and the same thing still happens. Not so much with music, but um, same thing still happens. I've heard about shit happening with, um, particularly like books, like somebody will put a book out, and then like, uh, you know, one company or think tank or something like that will buy like a whole bunch of them, so it'll go like to the top of the bestseller list, which will you know, cause more sales because people will see, oh, it's on the bestseller list, so I'm going to buy it too, you know what I mean? Um, So it's been going on for like a really long time. It's but yeah, they used to do that. I think there was a huge scandal about it. I want to say it was the 50s. There was a huge... Because I think that was when the term payola was coined. Mm. Maybe in the 1950s. Maybe earlier. But it was going on back then, too. So that's obviously... That's you, not a new phenomenon. Some of you youngsters... I don't know how many youngsters we got listening. Don't understand how much money used to be in music. There's no money yeah, in yeah, it yeah. really now. But back in the day, man... Because there were only a few... There were only a few mediums available. Television, radio. And in radio, you had talk radio or you had music. And back in those days, a company, uh, uh, a fucking band was like a company. Uh, a band like Duran Duran, all right, in the fucking late 80s, would spend millions of dollars producing a fucking album. Millions. They wouldn't do that, never do that today. 
but they spend millions, especially when you put uh, it, the, all the video. They'd have to shoot videos. And, um, but they would make hundreds of millions or fucking tens of millions out, uh, uh, off of it. And that market really isn't there anymore because YouTube and fucking Spotify and stuff. So it's different. Bands just don't command the amount of eyeballs as they used to because uh, everything is so broadband. You can have a million great bands now. <laughs> Back in well, the day, if you had one or, or a dozen great bands, they were only show it was it was very narrow band, you know what I mean? They would only show you maybe 12, 13 things at once and they were making a shit ton of money. Well, like I said, in a way, it's kind of a blessing and a curse. Because yeah. back in the old days, you only had a set amount. Mm -hmm. And everybody was kind of seeing the same shit, like, to a certain yeah. degree. And there was great shit back then. like there, And it's still good nowadays. I'm not saying that. Yeah. But it's like, nowadays, I think the problem now... I like it better now, because anybody... You know, pretty much anybody can put their shit out there. But... Because anybody can put their shit out there, there's so much competition and it's so hard to yeah, get and a lot of it's noticed. Garbage. Well, yeah, but it's like it was back then too, but it usually yeah. got winnowed out. Yeah, it's yeah. like nowadays you're just seeing everything yeah. without the winnowing process. So it's just kind of like you have to wade through a lot of bullshit. It's like, you know, you, I'm in, really into horror movies, so you go on Tubi, it's like there's 40 bajillion shitty five dollar horror movies you know what i mean yeah. they were made for five dollars i mean but then if you keep looking through there like mixed in there's like really awesome ones yeah and it's really hard to unless you have somebody to curate it for you it's right. really hard to like find the good shit like out right. of all you know and some of this good shit that she's talking about had that come out in the 80s they would have been huge blockbusters i mean people right right right, right. that's what classics. i mean uh, yeah, sometimes I'm yeah. just like wandering through Tubi or wandering yeah. on YouTube and just hearing right. some like random band or see You're some like, random. Man, I'm like, man, that's great. fucking like, great. Yeah, back in the fucking back 85, in the eighties, everyone been, been, been like creaming their fucking jeans yeah, right, over that. Yeah, yeah. But and it's, it's just, like now it's like nobody notices because yeah, there's so, so much, much stuff. Of, so there's much so much yeah. stuff. But um, a lot of younger people are going back into the eighties and nineties and listening to classic American and British bands. Um, and they're saying, boy, this music was so much better back then. It was. It was. It was a different time. The market was very different. Things were crafted differently. And the uh, it was deeper. <coughs> Even the um, fairly commercial stuff, like Duran Duran, had a meaning behind it. You could relate to it. Uh, it, wasn't some, it wasn't very vapid. A lot of the shit you. Find Although some today of the is, shit was like sometimes, some, some sometimes was, I right. hear shit from the like I was yeah. listening to, other day, um, some of Madonna stuff like mm. from the eighties, and I was like, yeah. wow, this is annoying. As fuck. Yeah, yeah, some of it. Was. <laughs> but uh, Madonna, if you ask me, was never good. Yeah, I, mean, I, didn't really I like liked it. her real early shit. Like yeah. I liked Lucky Star, and I liked like yeah. Into the Groove and shit like that. But it's like some of like um, like Material Girl and stuff like that. I'm like, this is a terrible song. As far as mega bands went, though, though I always liked Duran Duran. I yeah, liked all I their did content. too. Yeah, I was really into them. I mean, you got to really like you go into the Notorious album, um, and and they were fucking famous. They were real famous at that time. You're listening to that fucking, it's it's a whole album about hookers and blow. A whole album about hookers and they're writing and from personal blow. experience, sure. Yeah, and girls <laughs> who are fucking turning themselves out for cash in college, and it's just like I can't believe they were doing this shit in the late '80s and yeah. get away with it. But you really had to kind of read between the lines of what they were talking about, and um, you know, just it was just great music, you know. Danny Rowling oh. said, "Talking heads are good." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I really like talking heads. I really like talking heads. David Byrne. Yeah, I like a lot. Yeah, I like a lot of shit from yeah. the '80s. The, but but I'm not saying I don't want to romanticize it too much because there was a lot of crap in the 80s too a lot of crap it's just that nowadays it's been so many decades like all the bad shit people kind of forget about it or they just listen to it ironically or whatever and just like really only the good shit is like the stuff that people remember so I think that's another thing too that's why I don't think it's necessarily completely untrue that it's like music and movies and shit like that were better back then but there's also a kind of thing where you don't have enough perspective on stuff that's coming out now um, 
you know, because it, some stuff like just came out or it's new. So you don't have like decades of looking back on it and be like, oh yeah, that really stood the test of time. Like you won't know until like 20 or 30 years down the line. So I try not to, I always said like when I was, even when I was a teenager, so I never want to be one of those people that's like, back in my day, like shit was so much better and blah, blah, blah. Like I don't want to, because that's not true. That's never true. Like in any era. So, because you're, you're just getting, because I feel like nowadays you're just getting the perspective of, here's all the good shit from all the decades that have gone by. Like it's been curated for you to a degree because only the good shit kind of survives. So, you know, the stuff that's coming out now doesn't have that um, weight behind it yet because it hasn't been long enough. Like we don't know if it's going to have any staying power or not. And there might be stuff that comes out now that people are like, oh, that sucked. And then like 20 years from now, like, oh my God, that was fucking brilliant. And like nobody noticed it because it's like, we talked about that before. Like when, the Shining came out in 1980 when The Thing came out in 1982. Like, The Shining was nominated for Razzie Awards for fuck's sake, and it was Stanley Kubrick. Um, the Thing, like, went nowhere. It was kind of yeah. a flop. And But now, but this we, many decades later, yeah. like, everybody's like, oh my god, it was a fucking classic. Yeah, the younger audiences liked it. They did, it they did. Out. But it wasn't old, enough to, like, right. push it over. Like, it yeah. took a while for it the to... The thing with the old music was is that the stakes were higher back then and the real talented bands really fucking th had well-thought-out shit. But it wasn't just 80s. It went back to the 70s, too, you know? Zach is a big fucking Bee Gees fan. For disco, man, fucking Bee Gees were the shit. I yeah, mean, I unironically like the Bee Gees. Fantastic, the Bee Gees. yeah. They're a good band. It's beautiful. They, I didn't they, like they, it at the time, like when I was younger. It was so overplayed. Because yeah, because yeah. we heard it all the time, right. and I was like, okay, enough with the disco. Yeah, and it was kind of like the generation before us. So yeah, it was. Like, it was like dad music. A little yeah, bit. But although you, my dad wasn't super. I happy listen to that shit now, and I go, fucking oh yeah. It's like oh yeah, that was good. That's just fucking awesome. Because like I said, you have I'm more really, perspective on it now right, because yeah. you're not hearing it all the time, and it's like right. oh, it's my dad's music or whatever. Right. So it's like that. Uh, Juan Ortiz Velasquez says, hi, Tom and Jen. How are you? Uh, we're doing pretty awesome. Thank yep. you very much for asking. Um, so yeah, so there, okay. So about this particular song, like a lot of, um, rumors and theories went up because you know, it's like they posted on Reddit. So everybody's going to come up with some like fucking, or they're going to be like, oh, I knew the guy that did that. You know, everybody's going to like make up stories and stuff. So one person posts and they're like, oh, um, I'm a friend of this band and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, but it was like kind of this obscure German band, I think, that were called Icerks, Icerks, something mm. like that, um, said, oh, I was a friend of theirs. Uh, the song is actually called Check It In. It came out in 1982, but the lead singer is dead now. So that's what somebody said. I don't know if that's true or not. They probably just pulled that out their ass. Um, and then there were, somebody also posted, on, I think on Reddit, that, um, yeah, this was the, <laughs> this band, they were from uh, East Berlin, and they... This was the last song they recorded before they tried to escape to West Berlin and they all got shot. And, uh, I, and I was like, yeah, it's a like, so I was like, well, you might want to, if you're going to make up a story, you might want to dial it back a little bit. I mean, I'm yeah. not saying that couldn't have happened. Yeah. It absolutely could have, but I doubt it. It's very, I important. do think they're from East Germany. That to me, that yeah. seems the most likely yeah. scenario. Like I said, just because nobody, no fans. Yeah. Because nobody really remembers it. Yeah. And that's like kind of, and that's a good song. Like I said, it's not, yeah. It's funny because they asked Paul Baskerville, who was the DJ that supposedly might have played it, like the British guy that, uh, you know, lived in Germany at the time. And he says, this was a quote from him when they asked him about it. He said, I don't want to sound like a traitor to the cause, but I don't know what all the fuss is about. <laughs> if I thought it was the best thing since sliced bread, I probably would be more interested, yeah. but I don't think it's a particularly interesting song. So... Well, DJs are kind of um, they're, 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 bitches. they're kind of bitches. They're bitches, yeah. We we know several. Yeah, we're well, friends. Well, now now. Yeah, yeah, they're bitches. I I will say I I do know we do know one DJ that is a delightful delightful person. Yeah. But most um most DJs are. Sherry's awesome. Oh yeah yeah okay Sherry's so awesome. so we know yeah. two so we know two yeah Sherry's you know awesome. the other one I'm talking about so we know two DJs that yeah. are awesome. actually you know what I I kind of take that back because now I'm thinking of like other DJs and I know I'm like oh yeah. well okay they're not all bitches. Mark's Maybe. great. Yeah, maybe I'm just thinking yeah, yeah. of maybe I'm just thinking of like it's just it's just I'm just thinking of like a couple that I know. It's not that a are personal kind of thing. It's just that <laughs> DJs have their opinions about music. Sure, that's all it is. Yeah, and and they're very strong opinions. Yeah. Which okay, I have strong yeah. opinions, less strong opinions that I used to have because I'm just kind of like, look, man, it's just and I don't. 
you know, you do you. I'm not going to shit on other people's musical taste or movie taste or anything like that because everybody likes different shit. And it's dumb saying it's like, oh, well, you know, that sucks across the board. I'm like, well, shit like that is subjective. No, so. th- no. What's, the, what's this DJ's name? Baskerville? Paul Baskerville. Oh, yeah. Okay. What he's saying is, is he's saying at the time he didn't really notice this. So. Right, right, right. Uh, but he doesn't see it through our eyes. Right. He's older than us. This song has aged well. Yeah. Okay, and really, uh, it, it, it's a tight song, and it does kind of nail a certain aesthetic that goth people like. Yeah. Like that, yeah, like that's... Yeah, that's we hear a, shit like that, like all our yeah. little all our, all our little yeah. happy... So you're like, who is that? Is there more yeah. of it? That's our little but happy place. back in his day, there would have been a lot of bands like this, and this would have been right. new and kind of experimental and maybe like a little try-hard and like nothing really outstanding. Right. So that's what he's talking. That's what he's saying. Um, yeah, like it didn't stand out at yeah. the time, which I guess it wouldn't have it wouldn't because, have. like I said, there were a lot of bands from back his then point that of sounded view, like that. From this, from his point of view, this would have been all the new up and coming guys would have sounded like this, and you don't really like how they sound. Right. That, that's what he would have been like. But like I imagine, said, like everybody sounded like No Doubt, all fucking right. just showing up out well, of nowhere. Well, they did for a little in while. I remember. <laughs> now, yeah, everybody sounds like fucking No Doubt. Yeah. Although I fucking love Gwen Stefani and no doubt I fucking I love. I song. liked him at the time, but I when I hear him now, I don't like him. I as still much. love. Him. They were uh, I, I, I like nineties music also. Yeah. It just it had its own thing, its own gestalt. It did, but like I told you, it's like I'm not. Once the nineties came along, it's like there was something about it that just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And There's I a lot can't. of good nineties music. Oh yeah, I'm not saying that. Switchblade Symphony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, not saying that. But that was kind of that was like more of a goth. like a niche yeah, thing. Yeah. Like a lot of the mainstream music from the '90s just kind of like got on my nerves. There was a lot of good '90s dead can dance. Yeah, yeah. I'm not talking you know? about that necessarily. Right. You're talking about the mainstream goth. Uh, yeah, 90s. yeah, yeah. The mainstream. Well, 90s. you know, Prodigy, yeah. which was kind of coming out of nowhere. I'm like, Okay, yeah, about I would smack my bitch up. You know, like, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, Marilyn Manson. I'll dance to that if I'm drunk enough. I don't yeah. really like Marilyn Manson. Like the only co- the only songs I like of his are like the covers. The covers. That he did. Like those are okay, but other than that, I was just like I said, it all just seemed very try hard. It was of its t- of its day. Yeah. It was the '90s. Really just seemed like the try hard decade. Yeah, it was. It was of. Its and that day. just bugged me, because I'm like, stop trying to be cool, stop trying to be hard, stop trying to be edgy. It's just like yeah. just be what you want to be like. Garbage came out. I do like garbage. Fucking garbage was okay. great. Shirley Manson, fucking, you know, who, uh, who, who's kind of almost forgotten now. It's a shame. She did great James Bond covers. Fucking um, just good videos. Uh, I, was, I liked garbage. Massive Attack was also good. Yeah, they um, were good. They were good. Right. Oh, I need to put some more of that on my Spotify. You yeah, asked. Portishead. I forgot. Yeah, I like Portishead. Uh, yeah, I like Portishead. So the 90s was not a bad time for music. No, no, no. I just didn't like it as much. Yeah. Because I didn't like the aesthetic. One thing that I like about 80s music, and I think maybe why a lot of younger people like are into 80s music now, is because it's not... A lot of 80s music is very um, earnest. Like, they weren't trying over the top to be cool or edgy or anything like that. They were just kind of singing about their genuine emotions and they didn't really care if it sounded cheesy or whatever. And I kind of like that better than being like, Ooh, look what a badass I am. Or look what, like that kind of shit just pisses me off. Um, I kind of just wish because, because it just comes off as fake. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a pose and I don't really like anything that comes off as a pose. You know, if you're weird and you're just making music that's weird and it comes across as genuine because you're genuinely a weird person, that I'm going to be into that. But if you're just pretending to be a weird person because you think that's what's going to sell, then th- then it's really obvious and it just comes across as fake and I don't like it. Ben says the AI movies are coming. Uh, no, AI movies are not coming. AI movies have been here for a long time, uh, according to my sources inside Hollywood. Okay, but no, it, uh... AI, AI's writing scripts, cut and paste bullshit, and they just kind of pick through. There's a human involved, but well, like I said, I have a subscription to an AI writing thing, mm-hmm. and if you just tell it to write a script about whatever, it's not great. No, you got to pick through it. You have to really go yeah. through there, so it has to still be human directed. Yeah. I think it will still be a long time before AI can absolutely come up with like a good story on its own. 
Um, because what I noticed, I was curious, like I said, to see what would happen. So I gave it um, kind of an outline. And I said, I want to see what it, like, write a novel, like, you know, based on this outline that I put up there. And it was okay. But one thing that I noticed that it did a lot was it kept repeating shit. Like, it would do, like, a series of scenes, and I'm like, oh, that's okay. You know, it still needs tweaking, obviously. Um, it's like, that's all right. But then you'd go to the next chapter, and it was basically, like, the same shit again, but, like, just written in a slightly different way. <laughs> so it was just, it kept, like, repeating the same kind of shit over and over again. So you really definitely do need a human to still, like, curate that shit, seriously. Yeah. Now, I don't know, I don't know if Brian is fucking... Uh... I know he's online. I don't know if he's in the comment section, but no, Brian Hackett, said, who's a buddy of mine, he worked on fucking uh, Drag Through Concrete. He says AI scripts have been been around for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, I've used AI um, for like prompts, like because sometimes like I because I have like a third of a novel written, and so like sometimes you get in there and you get stuck, and you can go in there to AI and be like, okay, well, whatever I have written thus far write me the next paragraph and then you and then it'll give you a couple of options and they're not fantastic you still but it'll give you like an idea and you can fix it you know what i mean so that's kind of my has been my She's experience with it. we liked any music our friends okay. yeah hold on i'm kind of behind okay, okay. um zach's talking about the bgs i like their 60s stuff more uh they were doing psychedelic rock and soul back in the day and it's gorgeous yeah they did do a lot of good shit back then like i said everybody was kind of getting into dis and uh, disco in the 70s um, Danny Rowling said, I'm all about vaudeville music, said nobody ever. <laughs> then Ben said, well, yeah, vaudeville wasn't just about music. It was performance, magic tricks, dancing, comedy. Yeah, it was like a whole entertainment thing. It was television yeah. on stage. Um, Kaylon Higgins said, have you guys ever heard of the internet mystery behind Cicada 3301? Um, ironically, I was actually going to talk about that on this show. I might or I might not. Um, I was going to initially, and then I was like, well, I don't know. I don't want the show to be like six hours long. We could always do another one of these shows later. Yeah, I do have notes for that, like down. So if we get to it and I feel like it, we might. But I kind of feel like a lot of people have covered that. And to me, it's not quite as creepy as like, or as interesting as some of the other stuff. But you know what I mean? But it is kind of interesting, though. I'm just saying. Um, ben says Charles Manson was a better musician than Marilyn Manson. <laughs> Charles Manson was actually pretty good, according to the guys. He was, for, actually, which yeah. I hate to say, but because, yeah. you know, because he's a terrible person. Um, <laughs> Mass Diddle said, do you guys like any of the music that your parents listen to? I used to hate my mother playing Motown as a kid, but I actually like it now. Yeah, I think when you get to a certain age, it's just kind of like, um, I didn't really have that to too much of a degree because I grew up when I was a little kid my dad was like super super into the Beatles and so I got really into the Beatles too and I never rejected that because it was my dad's music I just thought it was good you know what I mean I liked a lot of this I liked the Beatles I liked the Doors I liked a lot of his albums I didn't like all of it like he liked the Eagles and Leonard Skinner and stuff and I wasn't really into that but um but I did like the Beatles and the Doors and he had like a couple Kinks albums and I liked those but, um, so yeah, so I didn't really have a problem with liking stuff that my dad liked. My dad was weird. He didn't like music. Some people don't. Yeah, I've met a couple people he like that. drive around in a fucking truck with the fucking radio off. He wouldn't even listen to the radio. He just liked, like silence. He only liked one artist, Roy Orbison. Oh, I love Roy Orbison. Yeah, he liked Roy Orbison. That was it. And that was like, he, he got a taste for Roy Orbison when he was a kid. So I, I went back and listened to Roy Orbison to see what he was talking about. And it's just fucking kind of old goth music in a certain way. Everything's kind of downbeat. And, yeah. yeah. I have a bunch of Roy Orbison like, like on Orbison my spot. Yeah. He was kind of the original goth. I have a, I have a yeah. massive, massive Spotify playlist. I think it's yeah. like a week long. Like yeah. it's however, hour, however many hours a week is. It's that long. So I could listen to it for a week without repeating a song. Mm. And... um. There's, there's a lot of Roy Orbison on there. Well, I like a lot of, um, I also like a lot, of, I like a lot of old blues music. I like a lot of 50s rockabilly, um, that kind of shit. I like some 60s music. I like all kind of shit, really. Yeah. You know? But, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't have a thing about, I maybe did when I was a teenager, like when I was first getting into or maybe a preteen when i was first getting into like new yeah. wave and stuff then it was like oh you know that's old people music or whatever but i didn't really have that 
too yeah. much. And my mom listened to the worst shit possible. <laughs> the 70s. She like like Captain Captain and Tennille and fucking weird love shit like will keep yeah us yeah together. fucking Muskrat love Muskrat love yeah, fucking, I that one. And fucking yeah that's pretty horrible. Yeah, I, oh, I, I never I never got I never shit. got a taste for that. It was God. like super cheesy. Yeah. <laughs> Some cheesy shit is good. Oh, man, I even appreciate like some ABBA and stuff like that, but all that kind of seventies like easy listening kind of stuff. Yeah, I can't I, get into that. I can't get into all that yacht rock kind of. I yeah, I can't get into. Yeah, that. and it's once the seventies was over, there th- that particular generation stopped listening to music altogether. They, they did. Just, they just stopped. But there was so much good shit. There's so yeah. much good shit nowadays. There's yeah. good shit everywhere. It's like you just, yeah, you gotta look like to find it, what, but. What was the name of that fucking dude that did the fucking song about fucking uh, Lola was a dancer? Fucking. All kind of, what, Barry Manilow. Barry Manilow. She was big into Barry Manilow. I was like, God, I gotta do <laughs> Barry Manilow. I, okay, I don't mind Barry Manilow, actually. I mean, I'm not gonna listen to like a whole album or anything, but it's like one song, I'd be like, ah, all right. All right. Yeah, I can't really with the Captain and Tennille. A lot of people had that album, though. It wasn't really that weird because I think my parents had it, too. My mom's, like, not real into music. Uh, the only artist I remember her really liking was Kenny Rogers, which I couldn't get into that. But that was, like, the only tapes I remember being in her car. Whereas my dad, like I said, was way more. He had, like, a ton, a ton of records. But he was super into the Beatles. He liked the Rolling Stones, too. Um, Doors, Kinks. He liked a lot of, like, Southern rock. Um, he liked Cream. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of, like, all the other stuff he had. He had, like, a zillion fucking records. But then, like, when the 80s came along, he kind of got into, like, he li- he even, like, when I started listening to Duran Duran, like, he liked a lot of that. He liked Van Halen. Like, all that kind of stuff. So, I haven't seen him in a while, so I don't know what he's into now. But, um, but yeah, so, so I didn't really have a weird thing about oh, that's my parents' music. Ugh, you know what I mean? I wasn't that bad about that. Because I was like, hey, the Beatles were probably the first band I got into because it was always on in the house when I was little and I really liked it. So, because it was always, my dad was always playing music. So I didn't really have a have an issue with it, that weird generational thing. And like I said, my dad was pretty open to my music too. And he's like, oh, hey, this is pretty good. You know what I mean? So he wasn't weird about it. So, which I think is good. Because... There's good music, like I said, from every era. You can't get all, like, fucking wrapped up in... Uh, and I'm glad that that's kind of disappeared. I think Gen X, which is, you know, what we are, I think that was kind of the last generation that had that generation gap, like, between you and your parents, yeah. where your parents were like, what the fuck? Well, I don't even yeah. know what planet you're from. Like, I feel like that's disappeared to some yeah. degree. We can nowadays. talk to people in their 20s and fucking just... we. And to, well, that's what I mean, and that's why I said now it's like not weird for us to have friends that are like half our age, and like we don't think about it because they're all they're into the same shit as us. They're into, they and they've seen all the old movies and they like all the old music and shit like that. So you can just talk to them like you could talk to somebody your own age, and they know yeah. what you're talking about. So you know what I mean. So I think that's kind of cool, and maybe that's not maybe that doesn't carry across the board like for people that aren't into the same shit as us. Yeah, like R and B and all that kind of shit doesn't. Yeah, work. I'm not sure. I don't know, yeah. but um. But well, in our scene, there's people from, you know, 18 all the way up to 60, pretty yeah. much, maybe older. Yeah. And they're all into the same shit. So you can talk to them about music yeah. or movies or whatever. And they I know guys that are fucking 21 and they know more about fucking 80s, 90s goth than I know. <laughs> well, that's how we met one of our yeah. yeah that's how we met one of our friends, Nick, who I think Nick. is 21. Yeah. We saw him at Mannequins and he had like a. He looked all death rock. He had like the yeah. big hair and he had like a Christian death shirt on. And I yeah. was just like, we need to go meet that kid. Yeah. Because I could tell he was young. Yeah. He And Aaliyah was with him. And later on, we, we saw And him he on, knew everything about yeah. everything. He was all. We saw him at the Zymax concert, remember? He was yeah, there. They were, yeah, they were. It was Zymax. after he broke up with her. Yeah. But it's like, so that kind of blows my mind. I was telling my brother about that the other day. I said, well, I know like 20, 21, 22 year old kids that know more about fucking, that yeah. are all into like Alien Sex Fiend and Christian yeah. Death and Joy Division and all that kind of shit. They know all that shit. Asking me what I should, li- what he should And it's new to. to them. Yeah. So it's like, they're super into it. And I was yeah. like, I think that's pretty cool. They know the names of all the fucking guys in the band and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, well, I was kind of doing the same thing with 70s music when I was in my metal Yeah, phase. same. That's what I no, mean. You know, all the fucking members of fucking... Yeah. The old Ozzy Yeah, you go and research. Old Black Sabbath and shit. Fucking Geezer Butler and all those guys. Well, shit, I mean, I got into, when I was a yeah. teenager, I got into the Velvet Underground, and that was yeah. before my time, and the Stooges. Yeah. That was before I was born. 
but I was really into it, so I went and researched it, you know. Yeah, Stooges were great. That was back when fucking Detroit Rock was really good. Yeah, yeah. I like all that stuff. MC5, That's all gone now. Yeah, you had all that kind of cool shit. Yeah. Going. I love all that stuff. Any yeah. Anything that has to do with, like, proto-punk or, right. you know, uh, and then, like, the post-punk that happened, like, I, I love all that stuff. Anything that sounds like that, I'm into. Um, but, yeah, so, uh, spoiler alert, like I said, every, a lot of people have covered this song. I believe it is on Spotify. I can't remember what title it's under. Actually, I should probably look because I can add it to my playlist. Um, but it still, to this day, nobody has identified what this fucking song is and everybody is flipping out about it because like i said it seems like nowadays you can find out any information you want to know like in seconds and the fact that no motherfucker on earth seems to know (laughs) what this song is or who did it is just mind-blowing it's a mind-blowing development in the modern era yeah in the modern era it's and i think that's why millions of people have tried to figure out who the fuck what the right and nobody has any leads yeah. on anything it's and that's crazy to me that's it's, crazy to me it's got to be east german that's the only thing that makes sense to me yeah i mean east german or communist bloc there was no band it was a demo that a dude made with he had access maybe he was in a university he had access to that keyboard and he he made a western style song and had it smuggled across the fucking border that's yeah, what I think it so. is yeah and it was good if he was in the west and had a band and fucking could hang out in the scene maybe he would have grown into something to, you know touring around the clubs and it was a new sound for this time that sound is a new sound for that era not yeah, that was like I said in '84. That would have yeah. been slightly, at least in the U.S. I'm not sure about Germany, but been a bit ahead. in the U.S. that would have been a little bit yeah. underground. Yeah, that'd have been avant-garde that sound shit. in '84. Because I, I don't remember it super clearly because I was pretty young, but I do remember the songs that came out in that era. So that would have been a little bit underground. Yeah. Ben said Kenny Rogers is better than Kenny Loggins. I will give you that. I will give you that. I do kind of like the gambler. So what else is known about this? That's about it. That's about it. I'll, um, tell, you, I'll tell you what, Jen. What? Play a little bit more of it. Play. Well, I have to start this. the whole thing over. Yeah, start the whole thing over. Start the Let's whole thing over. Let's hear it again. We're going to hear it again? Let's okay. hear it again. I want to hear that song again. Okay. Well, we're going to start it. it over. Okay. It's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. you motherfucker. 
one of my favorite comics. Really? You ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth Jack said this is one of his clearer versions. I got it off, I got the M, um, MP3 off of the archive. It's everywhere. I didn't do anything. Uh, yeah, I like it. Like I said, that's that's my aesthetic. I like anytime I hear songs like that, my little ears go, Whoop. Yeah. That's you know. That's just this ended up I, becoming the goth sound. The prototype of the goth sure. sound was this. Linwood Sly said, Happy birthday, Jenny. Thank you very much. Uh, congratulations on the marriage. Uh, also, thank, thank you, you for thank that. You. Yeah, that's been how long ago was that? A couple days. A couple days, a couple weeks. A couple weeks. Been <laughs> that long? Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what, you sick of it already? <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not even thinking about it. <laughs> that's funny. It's all just normal. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, okay, so where was I? Uh, Danny Rowling said, where's that raccoon commercial break? Yeah, that, <laughs> we should probably do that. Um, and then Bridget Harrison said, more I hear it, it does sound like one guy. I mean, it might be. It's possible. Yeah. And then Zach said, I wonder if you isolated the vocals and put them through one of those AI enhancers, it'd make it easier to understand. It might. Like, I can kind of understand some of the words, but I think somebody has put the lyrics online, but I'm not sure what they are exactly. Danny Rowling said it sounds, yeah, it sounds like the song um, Love Under Will by the Jet Blackberries from the Return of the Living Dead soundtrack. That's where I've heard that. Okay, I'm going to have to go back and listen to that song now and see. Maybe that's what I'm, maybe that's what's pinging my radar because I just watched that movie not too long ago. It's not that bad, though. Well, no, but I mean, yeah. but that might be what it's reminding yeah. me of because yeah. we just watched that movie not long ago. Linwood Sly said Duran Duran's cool uh, in the 80s. Underrated, like most one hit wonder artists like uh, Dinah Killed, JFK, Morrison, Jimmy, and King. Yeah, okay. I'm not really sure what all that means, but yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if anybody knows anything about this song, I'm sure people would appreciate this mystery being solved, or would they? Yeah. I think it's more fun when it's mysterious. No, it would be nice to know who this was. I, w I would like to know who because this was. Because then is, they'd have this bitch fucking on Spotify with the proper name. Of who it is, what the name of the song is, and we would know the backstory. Yeah, I got a feeling it's East German. Yeah, in which case we might never know. Yeah, and it's not a band; it's a, it's a single guy. I Maybe. think. Where is that? Where is that raccoon thing? Yeah. There it is. Where is that raccoon? Uh, <laughs> we haven't showed that in a while. Well, because we haven't been doing the haunting shows for a few weeks, so we haven't really had much uh we haven't had much cause to do where is that raccoon <laughs> but i do love that i still want to do one of that of cody being like man said it would be okay or man said i don't have to man said i don't have to listen to you right isn't that what he said something yeah. like that yeah, what's up have, sly how you been i'm gonna have to get a gif of that so yeah um so this is one that's unsolved okay so this next mystery also a little bit unsolved i have theories about this but we'll get into that so this case is known as the jack is it froze or freeze i'm not sure emails so this guy back in 2011 this dude who was 32 at the time he died unexpectedly from a heart arrhythmia um i will note that he was also uh quite overweight so i don't really know but 32 that's still pretty young to die from something like that he died very suddenly apparently nobody uh, expected it um so he dies and uh he was apparently like a, a really fun guy like one of those kind of larger than life type of dudes like you know real into he's just a funny guy you know what i mean so he dies now six months almost six months after he died um people in his family started receiving emails that were ostensibly from him which is uh, a little weird because he's dead now all of the messages that were sent there weren't a fuck ton of them but they were sent to like different people and they were very specific and they alluded to very specific things that had happened since he died and things that the family and friends thought that like possibly nobody outside could have known about so whoever this is that's sending them i don't know if it's necessarily a ghost sending emails but whoever it is that's sending them had to know a lot 
about him, about his personal life and about his interactions like with other people, like other in people in his family and his friends and stuff. Um, for example, um, he had a friend uh, whose last name was Hart. And this, this guy got an email. Like I said, it was about six months after he died. And this email said, at first it said, I'm watching. That was the subject line, which is a little alarming. And because he saw like who it was from and he's like, um, so he's dead. And like the, the subject line says, I'm watching. And I think I'd probably wet my pants at that point. And then the, the message said, did you hear me? I'm at your house. Clean your fucking attic. That's what the message said. (laughs) And Hart is like, that's fucking weird because not too long after, like before he died, he had been over at his house and he was like talking about um, the attic and it's like, oh, I'm thinking about turning it into a bedroom or something like that. And they were joking about how gross his attic was, like how dirty it was. Like it was all covered with dust and stuff. And so the fact that he gets this email that says clean your fucking attic. Um, and he's like, and I'm pretty sure we were the only people in the house when that conversation happened. So he didn't know how anyone else would have known about it. You know what I mean? Weird. So he thought that was like pretty weird that he had gotten this thing about like the joke that they made. Well, about I'm sure everybody's attic, attic is dirty. Sure. That, well, well it, see, it? that's what I'm saying. It's like, it could be that. Yeah. It could be that. Um, so it's like, uh, there was another thing, like he had a cousin named Jimmy McGraw and Jimmy McGraw. Thank you very much. Linwood Sly. That's Thanks, very, Sly. very up, nice thank of you. you. Very nice of you. Thank you. I love the little, the little yeah, pear yeah, or whatever yeah. it is. Like the little aerobic pear. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So he had a cousin named Jimmy McGraw. Now, Jimmy McGraw, like, and this was after, uh, Jack had died. Broke his ankle. And he was in bed, like, recovering. And he gets an email also from Jack. And the the email says, Hey, Jim, how you doing? I knew you were going to break your ankle. I tried to warn you. You got to be careful. Which, again, the dude had broken his ankle after the dude died. And then he got this email from this supposedly dead dude that says that, which is pretty creepy. Um, so it's like, I don't know. Like now, according to his family and friends, everybody that received an email from this guy, like after he died, they don't know if it's actually him sending it or if it's just somebody fucking with them or something like that. But they all seem to be pretty chill about it because they're just kind of like, well, if it really is him, then that's cool. That means he wants to like stay connected with us and shit like that. If it's not, then we're just gonna, it's almost kind of like, they're like, well, we're just gonna pretend it is because it makes us feel better. They kind of are saying shit like that. So the fact that he knew about the ankle, the fact that he knew about the attic um, is pretty weird. Now, obviously, I'm not, you know, I, I don't really believe in ghosts and I don't believe that ghosts can send emails from the afterlife because that would be pretty weird. I know it's happened like on a few occasions but there, I don't know. I just feel like there's like a lot of other explanations for this maybe because if somebody knew his password, right? I mean, you could just go in there and like write emails just to fuck with people, right? Like you could, it could be a prank. Like now all of the friends and stuff and family and stuff say we wouldn't do that. Like that would be shitty, but I don't know if I quite believe that. I don't, I don't know if I quite believe that. Might be um, a family member. I mean, could yeah, be, could, it would have to be because it would have to be somebody that knew enough about him and yeah. about uh, the other shit that was going on, like to know enough to say that stuff, you know, or a friend of his. And this is a setup. He says, if I ever, if anything ever happens to me, <laughs> he didn't know he was going to die, though, did he? No, it was sudden. It was sudden. And he was young. He was only 32. Yeah. So it's not like something he would say. It's set unlikely up. that it would be something he'd set up with somebody. Yeah. It's a family member. Well, a lot of people have thought that maybe it was his mom or maybe his wife. Yeah. Um, wife sounds likely. Because she probably maybe would have known that kind yeah. of shit. 
So I wouldn't not, have and would have known the password maybe. Maybe. Although yeah, it's it, that's the kind of, yeah, I guess some like married couples like I don't think I don't know your passwords to shit, but it's I'm not He really, might have had it written down. I'm not that bothered about it. I, I don't I know, even I, know, I don't even remember my fucking password half the time. I know the password the to the fucking Wi-Fi. It's written right there on a piece of paper. <laughs> so maybe he had the Right, shit but I don't down. like I said, you know, you might not know my email password. No, I don't. I don't even remember I don't, I don't even remember but my maybe email if password you were to half die the time. And I'm going through all this fucking place, I could probably find your email password written down on a fucking piece of paper. It might now, I don't like that. Well, I didn't write it down though. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I find all your it. other boyfriends. <laughs> I find all these. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck, man? My my stable of stallions. Yeah, your whole stable of stallions and shit. All these in chads. Your, in your dreams, Tyrones. Tom. <laughs> What's that? In your dreams. She got all these chads. I'm like the most boring person ever. Tyrones. Her. And all, all these fucking Sancho's <laughs> fucking just... Uh, <laughs> you, you wish. All, I, I wish that. <laughs> she said I was. A, well, what? No, yeah, I like wild shit, but it didn't have to be that wild. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you die, who's who's? How many girlfriends am I gonna find? Like thirty. <laughs> like thirty. <laughs> you know all of them. No, <laughs> no, I met current ones. I know about all the old ones. Yeah. So that's yeah. A, yeah that's what I'm saying. But it's like, yeah, I don't... I, no, every it, girlfriend I got fucking on the back burner, fucking you know all about her. We're, we're trying to recruit this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm just saying that it's yeah. like, even if you went through my email, yeah, it's no, nothing exciting. No, I don't do anything from. without you. I, I fucking let you know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do anything without yeah. you. We're, we're a fucking team. We're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's why, like I said, you better not have married me than like running off doing shit like no. that. No. <laughs> you wouldn't do that. No, I wouldn't do that either. I no. just don't do that kind of. Would have happened already. That's yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's why we figured finally. Yeah, it was might as well. It's like might as well. Yeah. <laughs> One of us wanted to run off. We would have done it by now. But it happened already. It was a long time. Yeah. But yeah, so another person that got an email from this guy was, um, I think it was another. Was it another cousin of his? His name was Frank, but they called him Rock. Mm-hmm. And he got an email that said, um, well, actually, okay, so the ghost, supposedly, I'm just using that as a loose term. So the ghost supposedly, like, tries to send the email to Rock, but he said his fucking email didn't work. So he sends it to somebody else and, like, tells it to forward it to him. Tell Rock, great song. That was what the message said. And when they asked uh, Rock about it, he said, you know what's crazy is that ever since Jack died, I've been having dreams about him. And it's like, after he died, I was trying to, because he was a musician, and he's like, and I was trying to write a song, like a tribute song to him, and I was having a hard time with the guitar part, and then I had this dream where he was in the dream, and he, like, showed me the guitar part, and then I figured it out. He's like, so I kind of, so I finished the song, and then he got this mysterious email from this supposedly dead person um, that said great song, like he had heard it, you know what I mean? So I thought that was a little bit weird too. Like I said, I absolutely, positively, 100% don't really believe in ghosts, but um, that's pretty weird. That's pretty weird. So so there's that. So there's all these emails that he's sending that, where he seems to know like all this information. Now... Um, as I said, his friends and family seem pretty chill about all of this. Um, they're just like, we, if it's really him, then awesome. Uh, we like that he's still talking to us and shit like that. If it's not, we're just going to pretend it is because like I said, it makes us feel better, which is fine. That's their prerogative. Um, now if this is someone else doing this for whatever reason, because it, it's not like it was an ongoing thing. It's just like he sent a bunch of emails, like at varying times, like about six months after he died. And then nobody, because when he got like the emails from, when they got um, the emails from him, like obviously they tried to reply like, hey, Jack, how's the afterlife or whatever? Pookie, Pookie's on the show. Yeah, she's a guest now. You be a guest. You gonna be a guest, Pookie? What have you yeah. got to say about that? Do you believe in ghosts? She's like, I'm too fat to believe in ghosts. Would you shut up with the okay. fat? <laughs> You're gonna give her a complex. You getting fat. <laughs> okay. She's like, I don't give a shit. Yeah, she, she's I'm a cat. cat. She doesn't care. No, she doesn't care. That's status. She's like, I'm just gonna eat. Cats get fat. They're like, yeah, <laughs> that's fucking right. That's right, bitch. Look at this belly. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. she does. She doesn't care. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. She's just cute. Yeah, you're just cute and round. Yeah, we love you the way you are. You're Mommy, an all ball. Mommy loves you the way you are. Yeah, not sure about daddy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
Um, but yeah. I was worried about your health. She's not, yeah, she's not right. She's not that no, overweight. She's okay. She hasn't been eating as much now because Bambi, Bambi all eats all her food. <laughs> and Bambi's like really skinny. Yeah. But she's like a fucking, she will eat whatever you put down. She doesn't yeah. care what it is. She just like plows right through it. I'm like, that wasn't for you. Oh, okay. She's already eaten all of it. But okay. Um, but yeah. So, uh, so the family members and friends like tried to reply you know, and be like, hey, what's up? How's the afterlife or whatever? But they never got a response, which to me, again, that kind of leans more toward maybe this is a hoax of some kind. I'm not really sure what the motivation would be behind hoaxing something like this because it seems kind of fucked Fun. up. But yeah, it's like, I, I don't know. I, I could kind of see maybe. But like I said, the two uh, candidates or the most likely candidates, at least according to most internet theories, about who this might be um, were uh, Jack's mom. Or like I said, maybe his wife. Now the mom says that she never knew any of his passwords, which, okay. Like, I don't think the mom lived with them or anything like that. So it's not like, I mean, my mom doesn't know my email passwords. Yeah. So that would be kind of weird if your mom knew your passwords and you weren't 12. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Um, but like I said, maybe some people do write them down somewhere so they can remember. I don't really write them down. I just try to remember them and... That usually doesn't go very well. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I kind of feel like if somebody is faking it, maybe it's more likely the wife because that's just, you know, she's lives in your house. She might know your passwords and maybe I heard a theory that it's like, maybe, um, Jack was like kind of a prankster and maybe he thought it would be funny to have his wife fuck with people after he was dead and like email people as him. Well, I was kind of thinking that might have been a setup. Maybe. Somebody. Um, because here's the thing, and I don't know if you guys know this, but there are, well, obviously, everybody knows this, but I mean, emails, you can schedule send them, you know what I mean? So you could write an email and theoretically send it six months from now, right? And, you know, I could be dead six months from now, like, God forbid. But, um, but if that happens, it would be like, oh my God, she's writing to me from beyond the grave. And that'd be like super creepy, right? But it's all, all you do is schedule send. But there are services and like apps too that will, for shits and giggles, like if you want to do this to your family, um, that will, in the event of your death, will send emails <laughs> like to whoever. <laughs> um, to Yeah, that will do that. But here's the thing. You have to have written the emails obviously before you died right. right now the emails that he sent allegedly were referring to things that had happened after he died af either after right. he died or shit that only him and that person supposedly okay. knew about so i mean it's possible like the whole thing about cleaning the fucking attic um you know it's possible that he could have just written that email and then said you know, I'll send that later for whatever reason. But like I said, I don't know if he would, knew he was going to die. Yeah, a guy in his 30s isn't thinking that way. That's what I mean. So it's like, I don't really know. This is just like so weird because it seems on the surface, like, yeah, it would be like a funny prank. Like I said, it's kind of fucked up, but it is kind of funny, I admit. What if it was real? I mean, I've seen poltergeist fucking explore. Right. Phenomena. Maybe this is real. Maybe it's not necessarily him from the spirit world. Maybe it's just something else. Maybe it's the poltergeist doing it. I don't know. Weird. Possibly. And like, it, it's weird. just weird that it like specifically referred to, I don't know. Like I was watching a thing about this and they said, they said, yeah, the whole thing about the attic, you know, that could have been, um, he could have sent that like written it before he died. Now here's the thing though. What's that? These emails. Do we know these emails were actually sent? Yeah. We'll so there's proof of this? Evidently. This isn't just some story somebody's telling? Not as far as I could determine. Right, okay. It could be... And it was more than one person that they were sent to. could be the whole thing's a hoax. That's possible also. In fact, that's probably yeah. what I'm leaning toward because yeah. I really, really don't think it goes to be sending emails. Yeah. Like I said, I've heard about it happening before. Could be, could be the whole thing's a hoax. Some people were in on it, but a lot of the people in that family weren't in on it. And believed it. Just something like that. Well, and like I said, I was watching something earlier that said yeah. that maybe the wife is doing it, but not to be cruel, but because 
he said, hey, if anything ever happens to me, it would be super funny <laughs> if he sent, like, all these emails yeah. pretending to be me. And she was like, oh, I guess I should do that. Like, that was, like, his final <laughs> wish or whatever. And it's like, but I don't know. It's just like, a, this is just, like, very, very weird to me. And I know this is not the first time this has happened because I know that there's stories about people getting, like, texts and emails and shit like that, like, from people that are dead. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I've never really seen any conclusive evidence because there's so many ways that this could be faked. Yeah, there's a lot of weird shit about him referring to things that apparently only he knew about or that happened after he died, but there's other explanations for that. And the fact that you can send emails later, the fact that there are services that'll do that for you, the fact that, yeah, he he sent the email about the guy breaking the ankle, but, I mean, the fact that he even said in the email, it's like, I kept warning you about that. Like, maybe the guy was doing something all the time that was, like, make it likely that he would, and maybe he was just, like, playing the odds. Like I said, but the fact that he wasn't expecting to die is kind of throwing me for a loop a little bit. Because if you were, knew you were dying and nobody knew... Yeah, it might be funny to, like, fuck with people like that. Ooh, I'm going to send all this. I'm going to write all these emails to people, and it's going to, like, freak them the fuck out because I'm going to send them after I'm dead. <laughs> and then they'll think they're getting fucking messages from beyond the grave. I admit that would be kind of funny. I think it's his wife. Although I don't think I would do that because I don't... I mean, I would think that was funny, like, but I'll be dead. So it's, like, I, I kind of feel like that would be a little bit cruel to do because I don't know how other people would react to it, so I think that'd be kind of shitty. Um... So I probably wouldn't do it, even though I personally would think it was kind of hilarious. But the thing, but see, and that's the thing too. It's like somebody, if somebody I love died and I got an email from them, I'm not, I've never had that happen. So I'm not really sure how I would react to it. Like I might think it was funny, um, but then I might think it was kind of like fucked up also. I'm not really sure. I've never been in that situation, so I don't know how I'd feel about it. So it's like, I, did, I would just kind of err on the side of like not doing that because... I don't because some people might like take it really the wrong way and not think it was funny because I have like a really morbid sense of humor and I know that other people don't so I don't know I, I I don't know if the wife is doing this or the mom is doing it or if he set it up somehow before maybe he knew he was gonna die and like he didn't tell anybody um or something and he set it up because he thought it would be funny um I'm not really sure like I said I I think it's very unlikely that he's emailing people from beyond the grave um, because I just don't think that happens. So there has to be some other explanation. So it's got to be one of those things. It's either somebody else is doing it or he set it up like before he died somehow. But I don't know. I just, how would you guys feel if like somebody you love died and then like six months later you got an email ostensibly from them that seemed like it was from them and they were talking about shit that had happened in the six months subsequently? I'm not really sure how I would feel about that, you know? How would you feel about that, Tom? I'm trying to like I wouldn't worry about it. Well, no, I'm I well, I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of somebody cuz I've never been in this situation. Um so I, would I suspect fraud first. Yeah, so would I. Yeah. I'd be like who the fuck and then I'd be mad because I'm yeah. like who the fuck is like toying with my emotions like that, like thinking that this person's contacting me from beyond the grave or some shit like that. That's like not cool. So I'd probably be mad. I'd start asking it questions, and if it couldn't or didn't answer them correctly, then right. I'd blow it off. Yeah, I probably would, too. Yeah. Blurdo Dude said, I would think it's a glitch. Yeah, that could be, too. Like, it could have been emails that he wrote before, and they, for whatever reason, like, didn't get mailed. I don't really know. Uh, Blurdo Dude also says, happy belated birthday, Jen. Thank you very much. I had a really fun one. Had a little two-day mini vacation. So that was kind of nice. Got on all the rides and stuff. We'll talk about it on the sidetrack show tomorrow night. We can talk about all the shit that I did, and we can tell you can talk about shit you did while I was away. All the trouble Me? you got into. I didn't really do much. But you didn't get into trouble. No, <laughs> I heard about went it. Went to bag, bike night. That's he went to bike night. Is that me video? Yeah, I was hanging out with Lloyd. <laughs> hanging out with Lloyd, the white girl whisperer. The white girl whisperer. Yeah, that's what I call it. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk whisperer. about that tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, they had a whole stable of white girls. Just like the stable of stallions yeah. that, that I suppose. Yeah, he's my new has. buddy, man. <laughs> Tom also wants to know how to, ha how to have a stable of white women. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, teach me your ways. <laughs> no, we knew the same ways. We already knew the same ways. We were already bros. 
fucking, we were already bros. <laughs> yeah, we already had already yeah. had the same ways. That's like fucking, this ship is funny. I'll introduce him to you. Yeah, yeah well, the, apparently, well, around. you said they own a restaurant down there. Yeah, they got a Jamaican restaurant. His I parents, know. his parents are from Jamaica. Is it the restaurant that I'm thinking of? I might be. I mean, I, I think I'm gonna ask him. I think there's only one Jamaican. restaurant. He hit me there. up today. He says, uh, he says, where you at? I said, my home. He says, I'm over in Orlando. Come on down here. He says, I got a show I got to do. He's like, damn. <laughs> okay. Oh well. Yeah. He's got a foot. GSXR 1000 drag bike, big old long extended. Well, I mean, we got a show tomorrow too, but right, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't know yeah. if we need to do stream eight tomorrow. I showed him some we'll stuff see. of me and you and shit. Yeah. He's like, damn, I can't believe she's fifty one. And she's she's fine. And I said, yeah, I'm. I'll introduce you to you. And she's like, all right. You know, he's, he's just you know. Uh, is he gonna try to like get me into his into his stable affiliate? No, nah, no, nah, he's not like that. <laughs> if he did, he'd he'd have like two or three to trade. Oh, trade you, oh, are you gonna trade me in? For me? Two? No, 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 no. Maybe. Just, no. <laughs> <laughs> you said maybe. <laughs> he'd have if he did some shit like that. He'd have some shit for trade. Yeah. <laughs> Tom's. Do you hear that? Tom's gonna trade me for like two other random women. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are fucking. Well, I'm gonna have a. I'm gonna, have a, sh- I'm gonna have a show. I'm gonna have a show, Lloyd. At least it's. I'm gonna two. show Lloyd. I was impressed with Lloyd. Two Lloyd's about. One. Lloyd's about five foot nine. He's 37, five foot nine. Motherfuckers probably weighs about 180 pounds, maybe 10% body fat, and never touched a weight in his life. He's fucking just rock solid. It's just all genetics. It's all genetics. And uh, fucking, we were just, we were just talking, hanging out during bike night. Zach says, Tom, the ever thoughtful wife pimper. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, pretty Y'all much. are fucking uncontrollable. <laughs> Y'all hey, you, you said the shit. <laughs> I'm just joking around. We're, we're just yeah, we're just, just riffing around. off what you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shit, where it is? Oh my That's God. me and Lloyd. Yeah, there you go. That's me and Lloyd. Like, yeah, he sent but, me that. Yeah, I was at Epcot and he sent me that on my phone. <laughs> yeah, Lloyd looks young too, man. Fucking, he's he's uh, 37. So considerably. Yeah, but his know. parents own the damn Jamaican restaurant down there in downtown Sanford. I've never eaten at that. So I'm gonna. But uh, it does look good. Yeah, I'm gonna check that out. I'm, I'm fucking asking which exactly one it is. Yeah, I but, think uh, there might only be one Jamaican restaurant in there. It's yeah. the one I'm thinking of. I haven't seen any other ones down there because downtown Sanford yeah. is pretty small. DVG Dragon says Tom brags about all his friends bricked up for Jenny. Lol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he said that to me yesterday. He was like, yeah, I always brag about you. I know you. Yeah, I, know you I, I brag you. about you. I know you. About how you're going to trade me for I'm gonna trade two other for... white women. <laughs> She's fucking... <laughs> He's like, wait, well, well, let me see what you got first before yeah, yeah. I... Well, what do you got it's for players. offer? It's, it's fucking players, man. Players got... <laughs> it's fucking funny. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, I'm, okay, that's tempting. That's tempting. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Y'all are bad. I know we're terrible. Yeah. Well, hey, like I said, you say the shit, so. <laughs> so I'm just I'm, playing. I'm just, I'm just ripping. I'm on. just playing around. Y'all I'm just trying play, to get serious. I'm just playing around too. I just, okay, I'm just, right. I'm just feeling you out, making okay. sure I'm just like, oh shit, am I gonna no. get traded off? Just, <laughs> no. I'm gonna get traded off. Oh, no, shit. no, it's biker world, but it's not that bad. <laughs> we're just bike. playing. It's we're just playing. World. Yeah. This okay. Bike. I'm not gonna get traded. That's no. good. No. That's good. Um. All right. So. La- what what how long have we been on? Oh, okay so yeah right. was, i was probably smart not to do four cases it was okay yeah. so we only have one left um and this one i kind of feel like this is maybe the most famous one i'm not really sure i always perceived this was the most famous one this was like the first one i heard about um but this case is known as uh 11bx1371 um probably i don't know if it's better known as like the plague doctor video um if you kind of search for creepy internet mysteries it's usually one of the first things that come up right after like cicada 3301 and even if you go to the cicada 3301 like wikipedia page it'll link to this page like on the bottom because it's kind of similar so this was a video that was that kind of came to light back around 2015 and if you've seen it, it's about two minutes. Well, actually, it's exactly two minutes long. And it's a dude in a plague doctor getup, like kind of wandering around this abandoned 
building kind of situation. It's in black and white. And there's this weird, um, like, noise in the background. And then there's, like, all these kind of weird, like, what seems to be, like, encoded messages and stuff. And it's pretty creepy. I mean, it has been compared to that creepy-ass video from The Ring, which it's not quite that creepy, but it's pretty creepy. Um, you know, so, so, and there's all these kind of, like, shit on the screen that, like I said, they turned out to be coded shit later on. So, um, there's no, uh, credits on this, or no saying, like, who made it or anything like that. Now, this first came to light in around October of 2015, and when people started noticing it, and people started kind of looking into the history of the backstory, um... It was actually noted because when it kind of came to light mostly was when this dude, um, he was a Swedish guy and there was a, like a blog, uh, website called gadgetzz.com and he actually posted the video on the blog and said, we got this in the mail and I'm not really sure where it came from. Like there's no address or anything like that. And I, he's like, it seems like to have encoded messages in it, but I can't figure them out. So he posted it like on the public forum to like see if other people could help him out. So after he did that, um, people looked back and they said, oh, well, this was actually uploaded to YouTube in, I believe, April or May of 2015, like earlier. Um, and this was actually the title. I don't think it was the title of it, but it was kind of like just right in the description box. It was like this long um, binary code. And if you... Um, decrypted the binary code. It's spelled uh, muerte, which is obviously the Spanish word for death, which is, seems a little threatening. So there's that. Now, the person that posted the video was a user named AETBX. And um, so they basically, they said they didn't make the video. Um, their story was that... Um, that it had been like that he someone had sent it to him you know what i mean and then he thought it was weird so he posted it so when it was sent to um the guy at gadget zz whose name was um johnny crobickler crobickler is i think you, how you pronounce his last name he basically said um that this was sent it was the the envelope was postmarked from warsaw poland and was addressed to Johnny K, which is kind of what his uh, you know name was, and sent care of the website's like P.O. box. No return address, no nothing. And then he's like inside this package, and there's pictures of the package if you want to look it up. Um, there was a DVD in there, and they're like written on the DVD was this kind of like um, alphanumeric string um, in two lines. Uh, which he at first thought was a product key. He said the first thing that he thought was this was somebody had sent me some software for me to review because that was what they did at this website. Um, but so he took it to a computer and like played it, but instead this video turned up and he wasn't really sure what it was. And then, like I said, he started noticing there was like all these fucking weird codes and letters and shit like that, like hidden in there. So he decided to put it online and see if, you know, people could like kind of crowdsource like what it was about. And this is the post that he originally made. He said, we received a letter from Poland containing a really weird CD, actually a DVD. Uh, written on the disc is what looks like a product key. However, upon examining the contents of the CD, it's quite clear that this is a puzzle of some sort. The CD contains a video of this creepy looking dude in what appears to be an abandoned building doing stuff. Stuff. There stuff. are tons of, yeah. There are tons of, it's a weird video if you've ever seen it. It is very yeah. creepy. There are tons of clues in his actions. For one, he seems to be blinking in Morse code or something similar, possibly binary, with a light in his hand. There are also symbols popping in and out around him. There might also be clues in his body language, albeit more subtle. In the DVD menu, there is also a clue, which I almost missed. Clearly, a lot of effort was put into making this, and I'm personally very curious as to what it actually is. I haven't put all that much time into trying to decode it. I tried Googling the letters on the CD and in the video to no avail. I also checked the disc for hidden files, but there's just the video. Also, there didn't seem to be any clues on the envelope itself, just our address and a Polish stamp. 
And while there are a few similar puzzles like this, I couldn't find anything about this one. So I'm reaching out to you to try and help decode this. So that's what he did. He posted it on the blog with that message and tried to get people to like help him out. Now they found out, um, like I said, that somebody had posted it earlier to YouTube ATBX, like back in spring of 2015. And that video at that time, I don't know about now, was the only video that was on that channel. Um, and the binary code, like I said, spelled muerte. Um, and appar apparently it had been up there for several months and all, suddenly like after the um, Gadget ZZ post went kind of viral, um, everybody went back and started looking at the old one again. And AETBX was like, why is everybody suddenly watching this video that I posted like five months ago? So it the, like this whole thing happened. So at that point, like the Washington Post contacted uh, the YouTube user that had supposedly first posted it. Um, he wouldn't tell them his real name. He said that his name was Daniel and that he was from Spain. And he said, um, I didn't make this video, but this was also sent to me in the mail. Um, he said that some girl had emailed him like he didn't know this girl and she said that she had found it on a park bench and decided to mail it to him i don't this story doesn't really sound all that plausible because one you find some random dvd on a park bench that has a weird video like this on it it's like i'm just gonna mail it to this random person because she said he said he didn't know this girl so i don't really know if i believe this story or not but yeah um, and then as they kind of investigated further, they found that there was actually an earlier posting um, prior to YouTube that somebody had actually posted it on the paranormal board on 4chan, like slightly earlier to that. But they also contacted the person that had posted it there. They don't know if it's the same person that posted it on YouTube. And um, that person whether it's the same person or not, also claimed that they had not made the video and they did not know where it came from. So at this point, the video has been kind of like posted all over. It's on Reddit, it's on Twitter, it's on Tumblr. Um, and even like kind of larger like mainstream media was trying to take notice of it and trying to figure out like where it came from and what it meant. Now, so what they did find out, like uh, a lot of people were able to decode some shit and what they decoded from this video was like pretty fucking weird. Now, as I said, the inscription on the disc uh, was 11B-X-1371, which is usually what the video is called nowadays. Um, and that was in base 64, which is, um, you know, binary to text encoding. Um, so that eventually came to be what the video was called. Somebody else had the bright idea to make a spectrogram of the sound because it has a very distinctive, like very kind of a uh, grating like sound in the background. So they made a spectrogram of that. And inside the audio, uh, there were text and images hidden in there. Um, the text in the audio that was kind of, uh, hidden in the audio said, you are already dead. Um, the images that were hidden in the audio were all pictures of women being mutilated and tortured and, uh, you know, dead women. No, hold on, hold on. Now, what? These, these pictures were from what? Serial killers or they were drawn? Well, that's what or? they thought at first. They're photos. Okay. Well, you know, there were photos. Okay. They were encoded inside the audio right. of the video because you can do that. Okay. You know what I mean? Um... So at first, when that was first discovered, they're like, holy shit, this is a serial killer. But then they found out that of the pictures that were in there, um, one of them was from a horror movie called The Bunny Game. Okay. One of them was from a German horror movie called Slasher. And one of the photos was actually a legit photo of a murder victim, but it was, a ver um, it was one of the victims of the Boston Strangler. Okay. So it was a um, a picture that you could so get. So whoever's, whoever's you know, doing this, they're bullshitting. Yeah, they yeah. weren't like killing. But but like I said, at first when nobody recognized, because those are kind of slightly obscure horror movies, so you wouldn't necessarily like recognize them right away. Um, so it's somebody that kind of wanted maybe to think people to yeah. think that. I don't really know. Um, now also they did. Um, there was a spectrogram, the sound spectrogram they did on the DVD menu. Um, that came up with a picture of a skull and then there were more coded messages in there. 
Um, and they also, the thing that came up in the description, I think like in the YouTube video when it was posted, um, said something and it's in Spanish. So I'm not going to like, uh, attempt to pronounce it, but the English translation was you have one less year. That was the translation of that. Also, um, near the end of the video, there was like a, um, little kind of triangle and square kind of symbol message thing. And that was found to say something in Latin, which translated to, to attack or target men. So somebody that like knew what they were doing, like did this, you know what I mean? They also found that in the two minute video, there were like little single frame inserts. These inserts had Morse code and other texts in there that were in sort of um, ciphers, but not real complicated ciphers, you know what I mean? Uh, the Morse code, they actually translated to red lips like tenth. That was one thing that said, which we'll talk about what that might mean later on. Um, they also found a sequence of uh, 20 pairs of two digit characters. And this was discovered to be the latitude and longitude of the White House in Washington, <laughs> D.C. Okay. Um, and they also determined that the Morse code that said red lips like 10th, if you, um, they thought maybe that that was an anagram for kill the president. Because, you know, I think there's one, like one letter off. But yeah, that's an anagram for kill the president. Now, because of that, um, and because there were some other, uh, like, weird codes in there that people decoded to say, uh, strike an arrow through the heart of the eagle, uh, there was one in there that said that. There was also a code in there that said, a new order will rise, 13 and 50 will burn. Um, so people thought maybe they were talking about the American flag, because like I said, it used to have 50 you know, 13 stars and then 50 stars. So they were like talking about that. Um, so because of all that, because of the whole kill the president and the white house, uh, coordinates and all that kind of stuff. So at the time when, you know, uh, you know, the, the authorities got wind of it, they sort of started treating it as they would as a terrorist threat, like, a you know, for an assassination attempt, um, again, and at the time it was Barack Obama. So they were thinking that maybe someone was going to try to assassinate the president. Like this person was doing that. So, um, so yeah, some people also thought that because the guy in the video was wearing like a plague doctor outfit, that it was going to be a specifically like bioterrorism kind of attack, right? Because one of the messages, it was like a plain text message in there that said, the eagle, I think it was like an equal sign, infected will spread his disease. We are the antivirus will protect the world body. Uh, and also mm -hmm. because the video had the number 1371 in it, um, you know, that may, might have been a reference to the Black Death. So they were kind of thinking maybe this is, you know, kind of some kind of like encoded threat you know, uh, like a bioterrorism threat. So they did actually kind of like look into that because, you know, that does seem like a legitimate, even though it's hidden, but you know, people figured it out. So they, you know, not too long, I think it was less than a month after, um, you know, the, the Swedish guy at Gadgets Easy had like posted the video and like the information that he had about it. Um, most of the codes and stuff like that in there had been deciphered. Um, there were a couple left in there that no one could figure out. I don't know if anyone's figured them out at this point. I don't think so. Um, and there are other things in there that seem to, because he's making like weird hand gestures and shit like that too. So um, it, it could be like some people thought that the, uh, the, the kind of like other codes and like hand gestures he was, he was making was maybe referring to um, the Enigma machine. You know what I mean? From uh from the war that where they figured out the codes and everything, yeah. so it could have you but right. Machine. So it could have been that. Um, it, so I, I don't know, but nobody's like really figured those out. But the ones they did figure out were alarming enough that uh you know that that people were kind of starting to take notice. Um, one of the other uh, messages that I think they figured out from it was 
said something like, complacent are the weak, stand and fight with us, take down the black beast, kill his disease or fall with the rest. That was one of the messages as well. So, you know, again, like kind of threatening. Um, now for a time, because here's the thing, in 2015, ARGs um, were quite common. I was going to say that. Viral marketing yeah. shit was quite common. So at this point, one of the, I think one of the overwhelming, like one of the big theories at the time was that, oh, um, they were adapting, what, 2015, what was that Dan Brown novel that they were adapting at that time? Because he writes all those kind of conspiratorial, um, was it, Divi not Dan Da Vinci Brown Code or something, like, yeah, but everybody else does. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he writes kind of all those like Da Vinci Code type stuff. So, um, so they thought maybe because it was a movie of one of his novels coming out that maybe it was a viral marketing for that, but they're like, well, but nobody really attempted to, I don't know. It would be kind of like a roundabout way of doing it. And, and you would think that if it was like a big Hollywood <coughs> studio doing viral marketing, which they do, um, you'd want to kind of keep away from shit like kill the president and stuff. Right, like, you yeah. know what I mean? That, that might be a little like problematic. <laughs> um, so I, you know, so people are leaning more towards it's not the fact corporate. That, right. That this, this is. is probably not a, right. a corporate thing. It's like right. very, very unlikely. Yeah. Now around this time, like I said, it only took a few months, like before people started figuring some shit out. And then this name Parker Wright starts getting sort of thrown around. Now, he had also uploaded a version of this video, but he denied that he had made it and then like later on deleted his profile. But as time went on, he actually would come forward later and said that he had been the person that made it. I don't know if this is the case, but he came forward and said that he had made it. He said, um, he came on Twitter at like a, like a month or two like after the video had kind of gone viral. And he said um, to whoever it was that was trying to decode the stuff, he's like, you are no closer to understanding the message. That's what he said. Um, but he said that I wanted to put this thing out and I wanted everybody to work together to break the codes um, because no one person could figure out the whole thing. Now, he said that he did this as an art project, and he said that he had always meant to make more videos, but he had just so far only made that one. He has since made two more, apparently, if it was really him. Um, most people think it probably was him or he had something to do with it because he was able to produce the Plague Doctor mask, which is kind of specific. It's not just like a random one that you could buy. It was one that he made himself. And it was made of leather and it had like these weird eyes that kind of look like coins and stuff. And he was able to produce that and he made another video like on his channel that had that in it. So it probably is him. But it probably, yeah, so it probably is him. But nobody is entirely sure like why he made it though. Like he said that he just made it as an art project, but. What year was this again? 2015 was when it first kind came Kind of late out. for this kind of shit. Like I said, it seems very ARG-y, but yeah. it's like if you're going to do an ARG, normally what they would do is that, yeah, you'd put out a video like that and kind of wait for it to go viral, and then you'd, like, keep on with it. Like, yeah. you'd keep putting shit out. And the fact that he just put that one two-minute video out, and then he didn't put out another one for, like, years later, I don't know. It just seems really weird, and I'm not really sure, like, what he was trying to get across with it. Um, I mean, he was from California. I guess he was a film student. And he said that when he made the video, he'd been living in Poland because that's where the video was made. People were mm -hmm. able to determine from looking at the building and stuff like that, that that's where it was. And actually, I think they even like narrowed it down to like where the act what actual building it was because people recognized it from that part of the world. Um, but he said they interviewed him later. So if this is the guy that actually made the shit, he said... I didn't enter into my project without first finding out where my rights stand as an American citizen. Because they were asking him, it's like, were, were you worried at all about making kind of veiled threats against yeah. a sitting president? Like, was that bothering you? And he said that he made it, like, knowing what his rights were and that he would be able to get away with it, I guess. Um, he said, art is very protected medium for speech. As it would appear... Uh, the more political that speech, the more protected it is. That being said, 
Yes, my work has attracted that variety of attention. As I understand, they are, enter they are entertained but not worried. If they get worried, they'll let me know. I think they have more realistic focuses when they aren't on their lunch break. That's what he said. So he's kind of being like a little bit snarky there. Um, and he said he said that the video had attracted government attention, um, but he doesn't seem that worried about it. And he says he's not up to anything, quote unquote, illegal or shady. So he's not really worried about it. Um, even though it does seem like he threatened the president. So, you know what I mean? But, but I, I don't know. Uh, he also said, I see my work as waves on the ocean. Some people look for shells in it. Some surf, others dive. <laughs> Which, you know, whatever. Um, so, yeah. Because this video took off in 2015, he did make two more. Uh, he made one called uh, 11B slash 3 slash... Uh, not slash dash uh, 1369 that was at the end of 2015 so several months after that had gone viral uh, and then he made another one called 11B-45-178 uh, I think it is um, but that one he didn't put up until 2019 they're kind of similar but there's another person in them um, and it's a woman who has like this <coughs> weird mask thing over her face and it seems as though there's no dialogue or anything like that but it seems as though she's like a captive of the plague doctor i guess that's what he's trying to get across um but there's other kind of like coded shit in there but the thing about it is that once he came out and claimed responsibility and like i said i'm not sure if he's the guy that did it or if he's just like riding on the coattails but once everybody thought that he was the dude that did it it seems like no one was really interested in figuring out the ciphers yeah, anymore. Like, oh, sad dude. Because yeah. they're like, right. Yeah. Well, because, and that's what we were talking about with the most mysterious song on the internet earlier. It's like, in a way, I would like for them to find out who that is. Yeah. And, you know, so the person can get recognition or whatever if they're still around, which they may not be. But then in another way, it's like, it's not as fun, like, if you know who it is. Because it's the, yeah. then it's just mundane. When it's a mystery, it's a mystery. Yeah. And there's all these possibilities. When you narrow it down to this one, oh, it was this one thing, it's like it's not really fun anymore and, like, nobody really wants to play. Yeah. Because why would you? All the possibilities are gone because it's been winnowed down to one possibility. Well, I, 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 I would say that, yeah, that applies to this. Yeah. And that's what people lost interest when they had a good lead on who it was. And this, this is 2015 to 19. That's very late for this kind of stunt. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is like the ARG shit. Fucking really, this was something from the, the late nineties. Yeah. So we know this fucking motif. We know that thing. You know, fucking making spooky videos with codes that went out of style. Well, yeah. The, the the but the thing is, is with the fucking most mysterious song on the internet, that's still viable. We just want to know who that is. Yeah. And if we know who that is, then it'd be solved, I think. Yeah. And then people were like, oh, okay, yeah, then that's cool. And that, that song wouldn't be forgotten. Yeah, probably not, because no. then there'd be a story behind it. Yeah, there'd be a story, yeah. I kind of, the thing about ARGs, I love ARGs, I'm not saying that. But it's just kind of like, there's so many, um, you know, I think back in maybe 2015 or earlier, like it was maybe easier to get a foothold if you mm. posted something like this. I mean, obviously somebody would see it and it would go viral somewhere yeah. and like everybody and it would explode in popularity but because of that then everybody started trying to do it and now it's like a lot harder to get yeah. noticed because so many people are trying to do it so it's like yeah. it, you know so it's almost like it's almost like become a trope at this point like in the ARG thing it's like oh somebody sent some mysterious person sent me this yeah. You know, old, this old media, and yeah. I'm just, I didn't make it. I'm just, like, uploading it and showing it to you, and you have to help me figure out what it is. That's a very common, like, ARG trope, which I get yeah. because it works, and that's, you know. This is what Zach says. Read what Zach says. I he agree. said, well, if that's not the most pretentious film student bullshit I've ever heard. I agree. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I also agree. It kind of is. Um, and, and look, I, you know, I'm an artist myself. I'm very into that kind of stuff, but I, I have, like, a lot more grounded, um... <laughs> understanding yeah. of that shit i guess so and, and there is a lot of bullshit involved because especially in the art world where you know you want you want to be the next big thing you want to be the person that you know dumb rich people are paying like millions of dollars yeah. for you know my shit in a can or whatever yeah. like like that italian artist yeah but um, the fucking came in the damn box underneath his bed and try to sell it. right 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 so yeah, yeah. so if you can come up with a good story 
for why somebody should pay millions of dollars for that, yeah. then in a way I almost kind of admire that, but it's bullshit. I think that most of the artists know it's bullshit too. Well, most of you that just artist- got to talk. You got to talk a good game. That's all. Most of that fucking high art stuff. Ask David Bowie; he'll tell you most of that. Um, he's dead, of course. Uh, <laughs> most of that high art. Maybe he'll was, email us. <laughs> was about was about money laundering. Really? That yeah, that, probably. That, yeah, yeah. So I and and like I said, I'm not one of those crabby ass people. It's like oh, it's like modern art. It's all because I've seen a lot of modern art that I like. But I'm talking more about shit like like I said that Italian art. I can't remember what his name is, but I remember hearing about him in college. That just kind of like you know pooped in a can, and, yeah. you know, and I think the thing was called like whatever the Italian equivalent of artist shit is. Yeah. And I'm like, look, hey, if you can shit in a can and get some dumb motherfucker to pay millions of dollars for it, fair play to you. Yeah. Fair play to you. It was money laundering though. <laughs> <laughs> or who was that? Yeah. Who was the guy that? Well, now I'm not gonna shit on this too much because I think this is kind of cool. But um, who was the guy that does that? What's his fucking name? That does like the cut up sharks and all that. What's his fucking name? I don't know. God damn, it's right on the fucking tip of my tongue. Cut up sharks. We talking about? Yeah, it's like this big, huge fucking tank, and it's just like a shark, but it's like cut up. I haven't seen that. Yeah, it's actually kind of cool looking. And he was kind of like the it thing for a yeah. while. Um, but he, I, I mean, I'm not gonna shit on that too hard, like I said, because I thought that kind of, that shit was kind of cool. But I'm not gonna pay millions of dollars for it, even if I had it. But mm. but I thought it was kind of cool to look yeah. at. You know, I'd go look at it in a museum and be like, oh, neat. I don't know, but um, but yeah, the the whole thing about just making a nest of hair or whatever, <laughs> and then, like getting people to pay millions of dollars for that. Like I said, if you can come up with a good fucking pretentious ass story about why you did that, then the British guy, yeah, what was? God damn it, it's like right on the tip of my tongue. I'm not that drunk. I don't know why I can't remember it. I don't know why I can't think. I'll probably think of it like in the middle of the yeah. night. Um, uh, Linwood Sly said, uh. Where is that? Damn, Jenny, 1,000 other women would not compare. Oh, that's very nice of you to say. That's very nice of you to say. Because I was talking about the... Because I was talking about all those other girlfriends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's all bullshit. We're, we're, we're all just making stuff up. It's going to be all right. Tom just makes stuff up. I wasn't making it up, but, you know... You weren't it's making all, it It's up. all fun. Damien yeah. Hurst, thank you very much. It's thank you. Game. I knew someone would come up with it. It's like, yeah, the dude's fucking famous. I just couldn't think of his name. Yeah. Thank you very much, Isabella. Because otherwise, that was going to drive me crazy like all night long. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I kind of Is that all it. three cases? I think so, yeah. I think yeah, we finished everything cases. up. So, so like I said, this the Plague Doctor thing maybe is solved. We think it's just this part. I don't think that's that dude's real name. That's just the name yeah. that he uses. But he said he made it. He had the mask. Yeah, um, it's probably him. And he made other videos like in that same style. So I'm imagining it's him. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not really sure what his motivation was. And then the interest was. died down, and there wasn't. Well, any yeah, like it's not so. a mystery anymore. So, yeah. Like I said, people like mysteries. Yeah. If you solve the mystery, then you it's know, not fun anymore. Right. It's not fun anymore. Well, people probably weren't trying that hard, so he came out. Mm. Jeffy Art said, "Was it at Art? Uh, oh yeah, Art Basil or Basil or whatever they call it. That's isn't that down in Miami or whatever." Or no, that's in Switzerland. I can't remember. Uh, that a guy taped a banana to a wall and sold it for one hundred twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> See, like I said, in a way, yeah, that's that's like terrible, but it's also I admire the grift. I admire the grift. Telling y'all, because shit, if I could tape a banana to a wall and like get one hundred twenty thousand yeah. dollars, I would absolutely do it. They're not actually. I'll buying. even come up with a fucking story. They're about not it. actually buying that. All right, it's fucking money laundering. The fuck. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they fucking yeah. take dirty money and buy that. The fucking artist gets a commission, then he sure. kicks back all the rest of it to clean the fucking money. That's all it is. Ben said, "I admire that Danish artist who sold the invisible sculpture to a gallery." Oh my god, that's <laughs> fucking brilliant! Why didn't I think of that? God damn it! God damn it! I wish I'd thought of that. Yeah, yeah, it is in Miami. Okay, so I wasn't, I wasn't wrong. I wasn't wrong. Well, because I did a couple years ago, I did a um, like some social media uh, graphic design for a for somebody that was um like a perfume company that was gonna be there and they had like these artists like really cool like artistic perfume bottles and i remember doing the ads for that and that's in miami so yeah uh the satellite events are way cooler in my opinion yeah invisible sculpture fuck man why don't i think of the good shit i could have been one hundred twenty thousand dollars richer right now if i would just thought of that can i still do invisible painting or has somebody thought of that already 
I mean, I know they've already thought of like, hey, it's a white canvas. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know they've already done that. I'm, I'm too late. I'm, I'm too late jumping on that boat. But yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Invisible painting, though, that's some, that's some next level shit. <laughs> ah. Yeah, DVD Dragon. Oh, this is pretty funny. DVD Dragon said, uh, yeah, Florida massage parlors have some modern art on the walls and ceilings if you bring in a UV light. <laughs> Hotel rooms, too. They have some really nice, uh, some Jackson Pollock style like action going on in there. One of these days, I think we've mentioned this on the show before, but uh, across the street from the Chinese buffet we go to, there's a massage parlor. We're not sure if it's one of the fun massage parlors, like the happy ending massage parlors, but it's like we never see anybody parked there. So we're always kind of like mystified. It's like, and it always seems open, but there doesn't ever, we never see anybody going in or out. We never see any cars. And I'm just like, Tom's like, we should go in there one day. <laughs> And see with that massage parlor. Yeah, well, yeah. because DVD Dragon said Florida massage parlors have some modern art on the walls and ceilings if you bring in a UV yeah. light. <laughs> Me and Jen want to go there we could get a fucking, fucking happy ending, man. <laughs> and what a videotape the shit. <laughs> we'll, I'm like, get a good video. We'll, we'll good sell, we'll sell it on We'll sell it on our yeah. uh, many minutes. Sell that shit on fucking all <laughs> That's what we'll do. But yeah. All right. So we should probably wrap this up. Yeah, I'll make up something to eat. Because we I'm hungry. Yeah. We're, you hungry? Yeah, I'm sorry. I got everything that makes me make, make pizza. I got a pizza dough. Oh, yeah. Meat. We should. Because I was going to say, when did we eat? I was like, oh my God, I ate a frittata. ate once. We ate I ate a frittata, and that yeah. was like. Yeah. Oh, that was a long oh, time ago. You, <laughs> that was like breakfast time. You had a, you had a four egg frittata. So did I. That's right. So Not we're, we're on calorie restriction. That was a long time ago. Yeah. All right. So we are going to wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, so thank you everybody for dropping by. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Remember, it's Thursday night tonight, so tomorrow night we'll be here for the sidetrack show, which is always fun. So we're gonna get even drunker, probably. <laughs> Wait a minute, not on a Friday? Yeah, tomorrow. We'll Friday. do a small one. We might go out that night. Yeah, we'll find out. We'll see what's going on. We'll see what's we'll going, see what's going on. on. We'll see what's going we'll, on. We'll, we'll do at least we'll we'll do one tomorrow. May not be one where we're gonna get rip roar and drunk, but yeah, we'll see. Because we might have to go out. I'm, I want to go to Mannequins. Yeah, we haven't been to mannequins. Haven't been on mannequins in a long time. Yeah, maybe we'll go to mannequins tomorrow night. Right, see if I get paid tonight. I was gonna say, as long as you're paying. If I get paid tonight, we'll because I don't got no money. Yeah. But uh, but yeah. So, but we'll definitely do a sidetrack tomorrow yeah. night. We'll talk about Disney. We'll talk about uh, the White Woman Whisperer. We'll, <laughs> we'll talk about. Lloyd. We'll talk about I'm all. Gonna, I'm gonna call Lloyd to mannequins tomorrow if if we go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You'll meet Lloyd. Okay. Well, yeah. Like we'll, we'll take some videos of him. All right. Yeah, so, so bring one of your white girls or one of your black girls. He brought a black girl with him last time. Tell him to bring the whole hand. He's got like five white ones. And I'm not joining girl. it though. I'm just and telling. He's married right to now. a white woman. I'm just but I think they might be separated. I'm not sure. <laughs> he showed me the pictures. I was like, okay, yeah. Uh, okay. And then we yeah. were at bike night, and he was fucking working his magic. I saw his shit fucking work firsthand. I was like, so you're the white girl whisperer. He's like, yeah. <laughs> He's the only alpha motherfucker there. Me and him, the only alpha motherfuckers <laughs> around there. All these fucking little fat boys and shit. You know? There's a lot of frat boys down there. Not frat boys, fat boys. Well, frat boys and fat yeah, boys. Yeah, yeah, they're all fat. All college boys. Yeah, we went to the fucking, you know, across the street from the uh, arcade place, what's it called? Throwbacks? They got a couple of those little bars over there. Yeah, yeah, We yeah. went there. It's a little talking. college bar. Oh, okay. And they had all these little college type people there. We walked in there, man. We were looking at it. It was all white people. And fucking uh, all them white boys were fucked up looking. Did they have cargo shorts and Crocs on? Yeah, and just fucking fat and fucking like you know out they're of so, shape. They're and so shit. dumpy. And every female eyeball fell on me on me and Lloyd. They're we like, oh my god, the, the, whole the only game. good looking people. Yeah, there. but then his, his 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 black chick showed up. He he uh, fucking went to high school with her, and then <laughs> she dominated the whole fucking crowd. I should have got that shit on video. I pulled the fucking camera out because she was riding on his lap like that, you know. And I says, oh, I gotta get this. I'm gonna put this on fucking OnlyVids. Wrong, fuck, on, on our only video. And he's like, yeah, yeah, do it. But then I was like, nah, nah. I was like, nah, I can do it. I'll get in well, trouble. Well, no, because, well, yeah. You, one, you'll get in trouble. And two, you need a release for that kind of you shit. You need a release for that shit. <laughs> it's yeah. too much trouble. Yeah. You can't, like, just put but, random people but on But the food there was pretty good, man. We had those $15 hamburgers. They were pretty good on ciabatta yeah. bread. Yeah, I don't think I've ever eaten there. Yeah, we'll go there. I don't think I've ever been in there. We'll bar. go there. Downtown Sanford. All right, so maybe, yeah, downtown Sanford's pretty good. Yeah, bad. I had that damn maybe fucking barbecue there, burger. It was on toasted ciabatta bread. Big ass fucking hamburger with barbecue sauce and fucking three onion rings on top of it with some pickles and shit. That shit was good. Pickles and shit. Pickles and shit. <laughs> I like that. I like the onion rings. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
Well, yeah, so maybe we'll go to downtown San yeah. Bernardino. We haven't been in a while. Right. Hopefully you won't get in any fights. No, Hopefully no. I won't get in any fights. No, no, it should be okay. I'll try not to. I'll fucking tell, I'll tell Tom I'm coming. Say, clear clear the area. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on trend, no. Right, but still. I mean, well, but the thing about it is that, if I mean. If somebody grabs your ass, I'm going to fight. Well, that's that. How, well, yeah, I that's, probably that's will, how too. It is. So I, I wouldn't blame you when that I ran through two of them that Because I said, yeah, I'll probably uh, hit them also. Yeah. Not, so. I ran through two of them Can't that night. Me. I'm lucky that I didn't go to jail. But they, they couldn't fucking call the cops because they'd assaulted her, so. Yeah, so that's yeah. what I mean. They were scared to call the cops. Well, good. They should be. Yeah. Fucking bitch up, man. Don't fucking touch me. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be, oh, you'll be I, sorry. I went fucking crazy. Yeah, you did. I can't help it. Oh. All right, let's go. You're so protective. Let's go. All right, so we I didn't even think about it. Just I know. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go get something to eat. Yeah. So you guys have a good rest of your evening, and we'll see you guys again tomorrow night. Come have yeah. a drink with us and have our yeah. sidetracks chat, which is always super fun. Uh, so good night, you guys. Bye.